welcome you to the SEC on CBS. If you're less miles on a rainy day, you get a little help on Tiger Walk. The faithful are here in large numbers and loud numbers. You imagine he practiced that all morning? We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The Aggies against the Tigers. Championship dreams have disappeared for both, but there is much to play for in a nasty condition this afternoon. Temperature is at 56 degrees. We expect light rain to fall throughout the afternoon. Hi once again, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. Welcome to Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Second time in as many years these two teams have played an SEC game against each other and I don't think either quarterback and they're both stars looks back favorably on last year now we all have those long memories especially when we don't play well and I can guarantee you that these two guys as they warm up for this football game think back to last year where inarguably they played the worst game of their career neither guy had what they think they can do in this big football game Mettenberger what had not yet arrived and Menzel really hadn't hit his peak believe me they're going to be ready for this one well, let's talk a little bit about Johnny Manziel he as all of you know I think has become one of the most compelling figures in all of college football and certainly the face of the program at Texas A&M often controversial but always talented he gathered with his fans in the stands on their last home game I think you could argue that he's having a better year than he did a year ago well the stats say that but for me more than his stats I mean he's added toughness to his resume leadership to his resume and he's not talking about awards or anything he's talking about winning two more football games and I think that's music to the ears of his teammates Zach Mettenberger in his second season as the starter at LSU among other things he's proven this year is his toughness sure did against Alabama let's go back two weeks ago first thing the end of this football game first of all for LSU was a bit of an embarrassment the way the game ended with their quarterback crawling on the turf but it was also inspiration the way he left the field and I can guarantee you not only the fans his teammates the coaching staff everybody saw the way Zach finished that football team will be ready today they contained him last year LSU did Johnny Manziel can they do it again well it's a better AM offense it's a better Manziel and LSU has lost eight defenders six of them that were drafted in the NFL but they're playing here they got a chance and for more on the pregame prep for LSU here's Tracy Thanks, Vern. LSU had two weeks to prepare for Johnny Manziel and this Aggie offense, and one way they did that was to use their star wide receiver, Odell Beckham, as the scout team quarterback. He was a Wildcat quarterback in high school. Defensive coordinator John Chavis said Beckham gave their defense a really good look, simulated the speed they expect to see, and made them better. As for Beckham, he said he had a blast and just hopes it helps his team. And guys, Les Miles, thoroughly impressed. I wouldn't put it past the Mad Hatter to pull off some trickery using Beckham today all right Tracy thank you there is an Odell Beckham fan mommy make it stop raining the Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Aflac the Hobbit the desolation of smog Liberty Mutual Insurance and by AT&T. A&M and the leader of the pack Johnny Manziel 
Needs 76 yards today, total offense, to surpass 4,000 yards for a second consecutive season. As you can see, it's a little damp here. Let's go down to Tracy for an update on the weather. Oh, just a little bit damp, but I had a chance to speak with LSU's field manager, and he told me, first off, they have not played on this field in 27 days, so it is starting out strong to begin with. They've only received less than a half an inch of rain today. Unlike when they faced Auburn earlier in the year, they had six inches of rain before the game, and they had another three inches during the game, and the field held up just fine. It is a sand-based field that drains really well, and the field manager told me the biggest concern is when the temperature drops, the dew that forms on the field can make it a little slippery, guys. All right, Trace. LSU leads the all-time series. Look at that second line. 16 straight years the teams met here. Dana Bible coached at both schools. End of the 1916 season in uh, LSU. He was 1-0 and 2. Then went to Texas A&M where he had a brilliant career as a coach. Aggies won the toss. They elected to receive. Trey Williams, Ben Molina are deep. James Hairston will kick off. AM under Kevin Sumlin has scored on the opening drive 16 times out of 23 possessions. Bobble. Molina will take a knee. Touchback. It's time for the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And the quarterback, Johnny Manziel. I watched every play of that game last year. He made a lot of good plays, but he was chased all over the field by the athletic defenders from LSU. That'll be the challenge today. Can they do it again for LSU? Empty backfield, five wide. One, Molina goes back to join Johnny Manziel. Snap is good. Molina, eh, not so good. Offense for the Aggies. The Matthews brothers at left tackle and center. Oh boy, he has missed the last two games, but he's back in the, back in the lineup tonight. Manziel to throw, quick offense. Caught, Mike Evans gets out of bounds, appears to have enough for a first down. Richard Robinson, number 21, with the stop. Yeah, this is a, a matchup that can bust any defense. The way he physically plays, he just threw Richard Robinson away. On that. Just tossed him away. Evans with his 58th catch of the season. First and 10, play action. Oh, dropped. Mike well, Evans. It is slick out there, and it's easier to throw the ball than it is to catch the ball. And Mike Evans is happy to see CBS <laughs> and the cameras. I mean, when we have him on, whether it's us or the other guys at 3.30, he lights it up. Second down 10. LSU four down. They bring five. Manziel escapes the first contact, heaves it deep, incomplete. Mike Evans goes for it. Is there a flag? There is not. Boy, Mike Evans is really upset. He said, I'm six foot five. I could have leaned out there and caught that ball. He's up, matched up against Richard Robinson, a true freshman. He thought he had an opportunity to catch that ball. And I'm not doubting that guy. Third and ten. Interesting call. Will it be called that way all game? Will they allow the LSU defensive backs to be physical? Good protection. Caught. That's Darrell Walker, number 11. D.J. Welter is there. So is Jalen Mills, but it's a gain of 14. Well, there's... True, two true freshman defensive backs on the field, and he matched up against both of them. 
One throw one way and one throw back the other way. Well, Molina broke through, but they're bringing it back. On the offense, not all 11 players are set prior to the snap. Sometimes you're going to first down. You go too quick. Well, and, and besides, I was still talking. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting used to slow down here. <laughs> first down, 15. Labhart in motion. Manziel deep. Left side double coverage over the head of Darrell Walker. And let's uh, introduce you to the Louisiana State University defense. Gary mentioned at the top of the program they lost six players to the NFL draft. Rasco Johnson Ferguson and Corey Thompson gets the start at safety. Corey Thompson's dad played for Texas A&M in the 80s and actually played a game here. He caught two passes for 17 yards. His mom is a track star at Texas Southern. Manziel wrapped up. Lamine Barrow, number 18. DJ Welter, number 31. And, and really, that's the story of this LSU defense. When they're able to run, they redirect and run so fast. Those counter plays, they ate up a year ago from Manziel. He did not have a great game rushing the ball against them. Third down, 15. They line up three defensive linemen. They usually rush at least four from this look, though. At the top of the screen is Evans, guarded by Richard Robinson, number 21. Manziel. Down at the 46. It'll be fourth down. Anthony Johnson, this was just prior to the snap, trying to get that crowd into the football game. They're in it. And then at the end of it, Rasco made a nice dive to just clip the feet. Drew Kayser is on to punt. This is only the 32nd punt for the Aggies this year. Heads it toward the right corner, and it will be taken on a fair catch by Odell Beckham Jr. 31-yard punt, and nothing on the return. Kevin Sumlin in his second season as the head coach at Texas A&M. Les Miles, nine years in Baton Rouge. And we welcome you back to Baton Rouge and the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. The quarterback, Gary Zach Mettenberger. Well, he's got it all. I mean, the, the toughness that we talked about at the end when he opened, an arm th to die for, basically. And now an offense of system that fits what he likes to do. Collins, Alexander, Porter, Turner, Hawkins. Jeremy Hill might come down to his ability to run the football, opening up the play action. Hill had a big run in last year's game. Sophomore, number 33. Connor Neighbors is the fullback, leads the way around the left side, and Hill picks up three yards. Defensively now for the Aggies, Stansbury Golden, Robinson of Yoha. Darren Claiborne, true freshman, gets the start, middle linebacker wearing number 48. Second and eight. Odell Beckham near side at the bottom of the screen. Devontae Harris, number one, lays off of him. They hand it off to Hill. Not much. And this is an AM defense that has not had a good year. Worst defenses among ranked teams going back to 96. This bunch, fourth most total yards a game, third most points per game, second most rush yards per game. They have been porous. Jeremy Hill rushed for over 100 last year in two, the, a game in this matchup. Six times this year, AM has given over 200 yards of rushing in a football game. Key to the matchup in this football game. Third down six from the 20. Hill again breaks the tackle. 
Got a first down, LSU. That's a gain of 10. Three straight plays. Tailback downhill. This time following the pulling guard, Trey Turner. Just smash mouth football accomplishes two things. Forces those safeties up for Texas A&M. And it keeps Johnny Manziel on the sideline. That's a gain of 10 and a first down. Look at those tight splits. Very, very tight mashing splits. Neighbors number 43 is still the fullback. He starts in place of J.C. Copeland. Left side. And Jeremy Hill telling us yesterday, Gary, he's trying to learn to go north and south, right. not bounce that thing outside so much. Well, he's got the size to do it. Uh, there's no doubt. He walks in. He's got, you know, the 230-some pounds, got the big arms, big legs. Now he's got to learn the style. We talked to Cam Cameron, the offensive coordinator, about it. He says, you know, when I had LaDainian Tomlinson with the San Diego Chargers, he was the same way. Once he figured out how to hit the hole, he became an all-pro player. Second down and six. Kenny Hilliard is in the backfield now. They used four throughout the game. Toss to Hilliard. Picks up a couple left side. Been a decent job, though, by this AM defense on first and second down for both of these, for these five plays in the football game. They've held up. They've got a lot of young football players in my depth chart here that I'm looking at. Some players three deep, some are two deep. I have 10 true freshmen that will play on this defensive unit for Texas A&M. And the problem comes on third down for the defense because LSU leads the country. As you might have seen at the bottom of the screen, third down conversions, just under 58%. Yeah, different look this time though, obviously. Zach Mettenberger ain't keeping it, that's for sure. <laughs> no, he is uh, not known for a tough stamp. Yes. And that one's at the 40-yard line. Yeah, it's going to be short, I believe. Odell Beckham made the catch. That's so uh, really, really close. You know, it's not just the quarterback and the receivers that had to have to handle the wet ball. It's the center as well. And they will bring the chain out for the measurement. Smidgen. Looks like Les Miles will not roll the dice and go foil. Let's see. Yeah, they are. Why would he not? <laughs> well, you it's think still this early is in the first yeah, yeah. football game. Be tough to give Manziel the ball right there, but we do know not to overlook anything here. That's right. Expect Anthony well, Jennings is in the game. Yes. He could be the sneak quarterback. Backup quarterback. Connor neighbors urging the crowd to be quiet. Alfred Blue is the running back. Look at this. Oh, if that's the spot for the head linesman, I don't know. I, I can't believe that would be. He got to the line clearly. I, I thought, thought so, yes. I mean, did he see that see him? He's actually laying over the top of the line. Mm. He lost him. The linesman lost him. This should be reviewed. The gray jerseys covered him up in the second push. He's out right over the top of the line. Now, we do know the down marker was on the line, so this is going to be short unless it's overturned by right. a replay or a official. It's hard to believe that the linesman did not see him. Uh, I saw him. Sneak. Exactly, Gary. The head linesman came running in. Oh, yeah. And made that spot with the left foot. This will be reviewed. Uh, we're not going to get a good look on this one. Not from that angle. Nope. Let's see what we've got here. Oh. I mean, I don't. I, I mean, it just. 
just see what's clearly he got it over the line there. Well, clearly to me, <laughs> that makes two of us. Let's take one more look at that fourth down plunge by Anthony Jennings, number 10. Well, I thought Alfred Bluth shoved him over the line, and we're right on top of it, and the football clearly was over. I don't, I don't be honest, I don't see the football, though. That's right. the problem. Yeah. And Les Miles, that was during the timeout. And here's Tom Ritter. Let's see what he's got to... That took a long time for Ritter to come over here. Well, he's going to ask Les if he wants to challenge it. And I think it's worth the time out to at least make sure. LSU has called time out to challenge the ruling of a, of a ball short of a first, first down. Here's the problem, in my view, Gary. It was called short. No, no, there's no doubt. And and what is there to offer to overturn the call? Well, initially he stopped. Bingo. And then he goes across. I mean, his helmet is across the line. I, I don't know. I mean, they only had to make four inches on the play. I thought he went clearly forward on the play. Usually... I got to admit, usually it's an automatic first down unless you get stopped backwards. Right. And the spot came from the far side of the right. Nice, I, I, no, nice job by a &M. not arguing that. I mean, they penetrated well. That's all you can do. But I got to say, in my experience, usually if it's not obvious that you don't drop the snap, you get the benefit of the doubt, almost like the phantom tag at second base mm -hmm. in baseball. Doyle Jackson is the replay official. And uh, the microphone appears to be not working. At the review, the ruling on the field stands. Texas a and ball for the See the football. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, yep. but I mean, holy cow. Wow, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking, too. But, you, the, but I, you gamble on fourth down, and you always take that risk. I think he was reacting to the replay on the scoreboard oh, here yeah. in the stadium. Oh, yeah. Quarterback was clearly his shoulders were over the line. Oh, well. Ain't him up. Manziel with a lot of time. Deep right side. Evans appeared to be out of bounds. How about that new matchup that is being challenged by John Chavis and LSU? They're going with a taller Rashad Robinson. He's six foot one. Great size. Obviously, as I've said, a true freshman. He and Jodavius White, two true freshmen on the field, playing the two wide field corners. Second down, 10. From the 39. Four man rush. Manziel. Head down. DJ Welter, number 31. Well, John Chavis was sharing his opinion yesterday with us that Mike Evans is a physical wide receiver. Well, he is. He uses his hands. He establishes himself early in the football game that he is going to be physical on every throw, and he challenges the officials to call offensive pass interference. From the 35, third and six. Two wide, two left. Wide left and wide right. Right side, dropped, Malcolm Kennedy. It'll be interesting if they go for fourth down here on this, though. Let's go back to the studio for a forward update. Here's Tim. All right, fellas, a wild one. Oregon and Arizona, B.J. Dinker is going to roll left for Rich Rod's team. Hit Nate Phillips to take a 14 to nothing lead. Now, if this score holds up and Stanford beats Cal later this afternoon, and it's about to start, Stanford would win the Big 12 North. Back to you, Vern. 
Watch the fake. They got a receiver. Widen out a little bit, guys, with your camera. There's a receiver towards the sideline. Yeah, they had a trick formation right there in LSU. That is their first Snuck it out. Time out of their pass. That was Evans. Nice, right. nice job by LSU receiving. See, there, there's not a wing. There's only nine people there. Ten, eight people there. Nine, ten, and the last guy at the top right there. LSU sees it, sniffs it out, but I'm not so sure that AM still might not go for this on fourth down. Fifteen yards. They tried to steal it with a fake, and now they're going to go try to go for it. Manziel is only two of seven throwing the ball. Had a couple of drops. Oi! Great coverage. I pass rush, yep. yeah, pass rush that went past Manziel, but one of the coaching points and themes all week was if you go past the quarterback, peel back, you're going to get another shot at him. And they did on that one. Man-to-man -man coverage. Everybody, grab a man, do your job. And everybody did their job. No place to throw. He looked for Evans. Evans was actually double covered because of the freeing up linebacker in the middle. And then the pass rush peels back and clamps down and makes the stop. How about that? Two fourth down plays already. Yeah. It was Daniil Hunter, number 94, who got him from behind. Now first down 10. In a scoreless game, Jarvis Landry joins Odell Beckham Jr. Mettenberger settles for the short one. And Jeremy Hill drops the football. Well, they pounded, they pounded, and then come back with a deep ball. It wasn't there, just as he's taught. It's not there. Give me something. Give me three, four, five yards on a check down. You know, you like to call those deep balls and then not have second and ten. Ended up being second and ten. Jeremy Hill, Connor Neighbors, the fullback to the right side this time. Mettenberger with the change. Landry and Beckham, he has to call timeout. That is the second LSU timeout of the first half. Scoreless midway through the first on a rainy Saturday afternoon. See more of today's game with the all-22 camera angle exclusively on CBSSports.com. Watch all of the action live now at CBSSports.com slash SEC. Well, Vern, we got two high-powered offenses, okay? Yeah. How far are we? We've got half of a first quarter. Right. We've got as many timeouts called as first downs. <laughs> There's three total. We got three timeouts already. I get your perk. We expected a shootout. Yes. High formation. Hill. Yeah, there, there's, there we go. There's the story. Now, let's go back to <laughs> Jeremy Hill throws the ball up and then catches it just to make sure he doesn't get a penalty on the play. You almost have to look back again for LSU as we watch this play over again as they run the ball inside. Physical. Remember the Alabama game at halftime? And you watch Jeremy Hill go, oh my gosh, almost, I don't need 15 yards here. When Nick Saban came out and told Tracy, we are going to run and physically own the line of scrimmage. Well, Les Miles built this program on toughness and line of scrimmage. That cannot sit well with this program. They want to prove they can be physical with Texas A&M. Play action for Mettenberger into the flat, and it's bobbled by the fullback, yep. Connor Neighbors. You know, that's one of those throws as a quarterback that even though it's catchable, yep. you somewhat blame yourself. Fullbacks are not known as great receivers. You got to put that ball on the body that time and make it an easy catch. And that will bring on the Australian putter. That seems to be what we say each year for LSU. Brad Wing, succeeded by Jamie Keene. 
This will be his 29th punt of the year. The turn is on all the way to Bonte Harris. Oh, they bumped it. And there's the flag. James Wright, number 82. And now Les is going to amble down and have a discussion with the officials. Clearly a fair catch signal. Kick catch interference, number 82 of the kicking team. That's 15 yards, first down. I wonder if Les was trying to sell that his, receiver, his defender was pushed into the fair catch. Him, that's enough. I, don't, I couldn't see any push from that angle. That's Tremaine Jacobs, who was back on special coverage. Trey Williams, right side. On first down, 10. Second down, 8. Trey Williams was basically a kickoff returner last year. He's become a much bigger part of the offense for a and this season. Slow start for both teams. And here's second down eight for the Aggies. Manziel. Batted backwards. Tell you what. LSU is defending well. Yes, they are in the secondary, and that was supposed to be one of their weaknesses. I think the slick field, as you see, you know, they actually last year, LSU batted down at least three passes. That time, Jeremiah Rasco did another one. Last year was Mingo and Montgomery. Now it's Rasco. Third down eight. Aggies are pretty good at third down conversions over the course of the season, like LSU. Not so much today in the early going. Five man rush. Manziel takes off on it. Fourth down. And he had nothing. He knew he had to throw it wide to the outside or at risk. He was throwing late to the outside. Kevin Sumlin knows that that would have been a risky throw. He threw late to the outside, so he said, I'm going to give it plenty of room. And he actually just overborrowed. And give a lot of early credit now to number 21, Richard Robinson. He has manned up against Mike Evans on almost every play. Wow, he just Odell drilled. Beckham from the 15. Well, I can tell you right now, I promise you, Zach Mettenberger is going, turn me loose. Yeah. Okay, we've tried this. We, we know we can pound it. I believe you, Coach. But turn me loose on this secondary for a &M. Give me a shot at it. Now, we chatted with uh, Mark Snyder, the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M. Said last night that he recognizes all these plays that Les Miles runs because they're all old Bo Schembeck plays. Right, and, and Mark Snyder was an old Midwest guy. He's an Ohio State guy. He learned his coaching from those days. Yeah, I, I got to believe... And we're going to pretty soon say, okay, we know, we're, listen, we believe we can run it, but we want to show we can pass it, too. This is Terrence McGee, the third, fourth running back used, as a matter of fact. We've seen Hill, Hilliard, Blue, and now McGee. It is a delicate balance for Les Miles. I think A&M is much more comfortable in a shootout. I think, you know, a and uh, LSU says, you know, we would like to get through this first quarter, shut them out, establish our physical offense, and go from there. But I, I promise you, number eight is already lobbying for a few more throws. <laughs> Neighbors the fullback. McGee is the eyeback. It's second and five. Terrence McGee up the middle. Cuts left. Whoa. He's on the loose. He's got Landry to help him block. Landry doesn't see the guy coming from behind. And the tackle is made. Well, Gary, so much for throwing the ball. Again, tight splits, run the ball, 
straight overran that time by the AM defense. And then Landry Vern, I think he doesn't know who to block. Who should I take? The guy from behind or in front? He chooses. I think either one of them would have ended up making the tackle, so it probably didn't make any difference. The tackle ultimately made by DeShazer Everett. 65 yards. Here's McGee. Dropped just short of the goal line. And a sensational block by Connor Neighbors to get McGee through that opening on the previous play. Everett again with a tackle, number 29. Second down goal. LSU, one of the few teams that uses that short pitch in short yardage and goal line situations. Seems risky, but they have confidence in it. Again, McGee. I don't think so. And remember, the Copeland fumble early in that game against Alabama when they thought they had a touchdown. Yeah, that was two weeks ago on the opening drive. This is McGee and DeShazer Everett. Great pen penetration again. The outside defensive backs are just playing all out. They're just not respecting a play-action pass. It's 11-man stop-the-run defense. McGee again. Touchdown. LSU. It was again, nice block by Connor Neighbors. Vern told you about it on the play on the long run, but Neighbors does it again. Block down, block down, and you know, three decent stops by the AM defense, but just enough to score on the third one. Colby Delahousse is on for the extra point. McGee, a 65-yard run, his longest of the season by 13 yards. There's the extra point up and good. Another look at the run by Terrence McGee. Well, it was a great cutback by McGee. AM offense overran it a bit. Good block by the lead back, which you have to do in this offense. Gets it down near the goal line and takes them three plays to punch it right in. Les Miles. That's a little better. For success. Well, it's in ISO blocking. It's not just the fullback. Watch the center right here, Elliot Porter, as the freshman overruns the play. The center will actually block the linebacker amazingly past the play. Watch this leverage. He runs Claiborne past the play, and then only one guy can stop it. Number 31, Howard Matthews. That's where you're depending on that sure tackle from the secondary. He doesn't come up with it. A play that should gain eight yards. Ends up putting it all the way down for a potential score. There's Porter, the starting center. Ben Molina, Trey Matthew, uh, Trey uh, Williams are deep. Five plays, 71 yards, took only 227. And it's a 7 nothing game on what is now evolving into a cloudy afternoon. Heavy rain about an hour before the game started has subsided. We can see the skyline of downtown Baton Rouge now. That was not the case earlier. Here is the kick, and he will bring it out. Williams. He's gifted. He can take it to the house at any play, but he's brave as well. They've lost a partner and a friend. Now it's payback time. Don't miss a new episode of the hit drama, Person of Interest, Tuesday at 10, 9 Central only, CBS. Vern Manzella started out this game two for nine. They tried a quarterback draw. They tried a quarterback counter. I think they just need to keep chunking. They got nothing else. I mean, forget the weather. He was out here early in the day practicing throwing in the rain. I think you just got to do what you do and keep doing it. Again, Rashard Robinson on Evans, top of the screen. Manziel goes that direction, incomplete. It was intended for Malcolm Kennedy, number 84. 
Two for ten. Well, one of the things that John Chavis likes to say to his defense is, yes, I have to help you with good calls. That's my job. But you have to own your job. And that's what they're doing so far in this game. The rushers are rushing, and the DBs are playing man-to-man -man coverage. Second down, 10. Three-man rush this time. And a quarterback draw, designed call. Yeah, they're going to get holding, though. It's coming back. Last year against LSU, most interceptions, three in a game. It was the only game that he's played for the Aggies with no touchdowns, running or throwing. The only one. And there's the holding call in the background. Second down, 20. Call was on Jarvis Harrison, the left guard. Number 51. Read option, right side. Manziel cut down by Lawson. Craig Lawson, number six. One of a few seniors on the field for LSU's well, defense. Craig Lawson almost signed at Texas A&M coming out of high school, and he stayed for his senior year. He's one of those great safety tacklers. It was Eric Reed, Craig Stoltz, eight half safeties that can tackle, and he did a good job on that one. Third and 17. More four-man line than I thought, to tell you the truth, on defense. Manziel, deep right side, got a man open. It's Evans, and there's a misconnect. He yep. was two yards open. Yeah, if he keeps that one on the football field, they have a touchdown. Let's see how he gets open. Yeah, physical again, and that is one of the things that the coaches in the league complain about, that Evans grabs the defender and kind of thrusts himself past the defender using kind of leverage from grabbing him. Kind of like a roller derby. Remember those days in roller derby? God, I'm aging myself. Of course I do. <laughs> that one, well, Beckham hustles to get out of the way of the football. That's a 48-yard punt, nothing on the return. This is Evans earlier. See him shove off. Oh, look at that. A little yep. jab from Rashard Robinson. Yep. And he, they have to play physical against a physical player, or he'll own you. First down he, 10. It's the way he kind of grabs him very smartly and just kind of pulls him by. 128 to go. Don't know if the Aggies will get it back in the first quarter or not. They've gained 500 yards of offense in nine straight games. They're way away from that now. Dylan Gordon, the tight end. Only his fifth catch of the season. Well, after that long touchdown run, Texas A&M put nine men up to stop the run. And a beautiful play-action pass to hit the tight end. Look, there's nine guys right there. They're going to play the run. You get the bootleg, and he's wide open. Great throw, great catch with a slippery ball, and another big play. That's a beautiful catch with a wet, slippery day. From the 29, it's Jeremy Hill. Goes left. That's two tackles missed. Finally, the third man there makes the stop. Isaiah Golden and Floyd Raven. Well, this is starting to remind me of the game plan that LSU used against Florida. They just said, we are not going to be have a team that bragged about being tougher than us all offseason. We're going to show it. And then Alabama said we were going to win the line of scrimmage. And now they come into this game, and I'm no, no doubt in my mind, Les Miles went up to his football team and said, nobody is tougher than us. Final 15 seconds, first quarter. 
And timeout called by LSU. How about that? Another busted formation. And I'll tell you, Jarvis Landry was upset with the signals coming in. He had the wrong play. LSU, no timeouts left. Yeah, Jarvis Landry right here. Modern day football, the wide receivers look to the bench to get the formation. Clock's running down. Les Miles is looking at the clock. Jarvis Landry's trying to figure out where to go. And they force a timeout. Now watch Landry turn around and yell at his position coach. Going, come on, man. <laughs> I need the signal. And so uh, LSU has used all three of its timeouts. We've got a second down and six. 11 seconds to go first quarter. At the AM 25, McGee is the running back. He had the big play here in the first quarter, 65-yard run. Neighbors leads the way right side. McGee, see where they spot this. Darian Claiborne made the tackle. There's nothing more Mark Schneider can do for Texas A&M. He's got 10 men committed to stopping the run on that play. Last time the Aggies failed to score in the first quarter of a game, was last year against SMU. That's the end of the first. We'll return to Baton Rouge after this message and a word from your local station. We welcome you back to Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge. A low scoring game. I mean, really low. <laughs> Seven nothing. Are you as surprised as I am? Well, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the game plan has kind of evolved the way LSU wants it right now. Obviously, Manziel off to a slow start, but LSU has run the ball even maybe better than they thought. I mean, they, they've hit big plays. They have not given up on it, and it's also opened up the play action pass game that right. they were hoping to do. So, so far, everything has gone LSU's way. Their defense is making plays. They're rushing Manziel. The defensive backs are making plays and he's missing when he has opportunities third down one opening play second quarter Connor neighbors signals to McGee who is behind him and they break into the secondary a first down for the Tigers well last time on fourth and inches they didn't make it but this time on third down they go with the ice I mean this is you know coaches end up being who they coached under you know I mean when you, you look point. at Les Miles he was a bow protege when you look at Kevin Sumlin he was Joe Tiller Mike Price you know different type of people and how they design their offenses but it's been right up the middle just like that graphic show high formation again McGee still on the field as a running back Mettenberger low but caught by Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. Again, 10 men inside, off covered to the outside. This might have been a running play with just an option for Mettenberger to throw it if he wanted to. Not a pretty throw. I don't even know if he got it. Did that scrape against the ground? I know he caught it the first time. Let's see if this one gets reviewed. Not so far. Beckham already at the line. J.C. Copeland makes his first appearance in the game. Sat out the first quarter. And he leads the way. Great penetration. And a flag is down. Darian Claiborne makes the stop. Remember, Copeland fumbled two weeks ago in the opening drive against Alabama. They were going in for the score. And he did not carry the ball. He played, but he did not carry the ball for the remainder of that game and did not see the field in the first quarter. Yeah, I don't know if they had one. enough guys on the field. An illegal formation, was it, maybe? Now Copeland comes over to the near side. Illegal formation, five players in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Third down. Well... So they, they were lined up too far back again. One of those either t offensive tackles or too many players, too many wingbacks back there. Third down six. Odell Beckham needs to be on the line of scrimmage. I assume that's the guy who was back. Toss Hill. 
Now we're back alive. Mettenberger. Touchdown. Landry. Jarvis Landry. Ninth touchdown receiving for Landry. He and Beckham comprise one of the best receiving tandems in all of college football. Boy, that was pretty. I mean, it's not, it's different. It's not wide open. It's not spread. But it sure is effective, isn't it, when you can run the football? Colby Delahousse on for the extra point. Seth Fruge will hold. Reed Ferguson snaps it back. It is bobbled and somehow. Wow. Somehow. That's the shortest one you'll ever see. <laughs> it went over the bar and stopped one yard behind the crossbar. Fruge did a nice job of grabbing the bad snap. Wow. It was bobbled. Well, Inside, first of all, he bobbled it, yeah. And actually, the defender slid by. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> so far, it's our day. <laughs> Pretty easy read for Zach Mettenberger right here. He reads the inside linebacker. If he goes with the tight end, he's going to go to his second receiver. Watch this. Inside linebacker goes. Go to the number two guy. Wide open. Beautiful read, very nicely designed play. Going against a true freshman right there in Noel Ellis. Nice drive. In New York with this Ford update, Georgia Southern is leading Florida. William Banks is going to take it in from three yards out. The boys from beautiful Eagle Creek have the lead 20 to 13 with no completions, no passing yards. If Florida loses, it would be their first loss ever to an FCS team. Back to Vernon Gary. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's go back and take a look at the extra point again. Well, that was a great athletic play here. Ball is bobbled. Stay with it. Stay with it. But watch. DeShazer Everett actually dives past the ball. It goes behind him, kind of off his hip, and just barely clears the crossbar. <laughs> and Delahousse did a great job. Yes, of, very athletic. My very goodness. Now, Fruge is still shaking his head. <laughs> uh, you bet. Well deserved. And I have never seen a more enthusiastic reaction for an extra point than that well given by Les Miles. You have to believe the way Manziel has competed in the past that every point is valuable. Yes. And Manziel off to a terrible start. He's two for 11 for 22 yards. Here comes the kick. That's a rather unusual kickoff formation and it bounces. Oh, oh you gotta let, let it go. Yes. Let it go. Well, you never, you know, I mean, you're, it's a free ball, and you're going, I can't. If I let it go and it doesn't go out of bounds, I'm a dope, basically. <laughs> so you play it safe, and you get the ball on the eight-yard line. Obviously, we all thought it would go out of bounds. He wasn't so sure. Hmm. And there is a flag down at the 25. After the play was over, we had an unsportsmanlike conduct. Number nine, number 50, number 59, the Gonzalez see those penalties offset. The ball will be put in play at the eight yard line. Nate Askew, defensive back for AM, and Jermario Rasco. First down 10, Aggies down by 14. Early moments of the second quarter. The only thing that you got to say about Manziel now is he's got the wind to his back. Yeah. And there is no rain for the moment. Jalen Mills has now drawn the assignment on Evans. Manziel looks left side. He's got a man wide open. It's Darrell Walker. That's his third completion in the game. Tredavious White, number 16. And with that one pass completion, Manziel surpasses the number of yards, four of which he had accounted. That was a 24-yard game. 
from the 31. Across the middle, got it. Beautiful throw. Nice catch. Travis Labhart, who uh, since we saw the Aggies last, has earned a starting spot. He was a former walk-on. You can just feel he's he understands the game now. Wins at his back. Starting to fire the football. Good. No good. Flag down. Well, now you're gonna. Everybody's gonna wonder is who threw who out of bounds here. Will it be on Mike Evans? Will it be on Rashad Robinson? Physical game to the outside. No. Oh. oh, it's on. It's gonna. Well, yeah. at the end it was on Evans. At the beginning it was on <laughs> Rashad Robinson. Pass interference. Number 21 defense. The 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. That's Robinson. I think you're just going to have to live with some of those if you're at LSU. I mean, there's no way backing away. Evans is going to play like that the whole game. No points in the first quarter, 48 yards and two first downs, but they've more than made up for it on this possession. Manziel. Good block. Missed tackle. That's why he's so excited. Yeah, they had him in the pocket, Ted. He's one of those special players. When you think you got him in the pocket, you really don't. Rasko thought he had him, and he didn't have him. That was Cameron Clear, number 85, the tight end who had the block that allowed Manziel to pick up six or seven more Imagine yards. how frustrating that is to beat your guy up front. You, you got a good SEC tackle blocking you. Then you're coming in free, and Manziel makes you look silly. <laughs> That's why you never can get comfortable. Every point just let every point's going to count in this football game. You have to believe that. 13, there's the measurement, first down. 13 consecutive games for the Aggies, scoring in excess of 40 points. They're scoreless so far, but you just have a feeling it's got to happen. We just saw a game yeah. a week ago, 20-point lead with 10 minutes to go, the way it ended. The prayer, Jordan Hare, I saw somebody, yep. that's, a, that's a good one. First down, 10. No help at the bottom of the screen. Freshman against drafted player Mike Evans. Going to be an NFL star. Handoff Molina. Not much there. Inside the 30, however. Daniil Hunter and Craig Lawson with the tackle. Manziel, 4 for 13 now. Started off. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore now. He's in his groove. It's like Mickey Mantle struck out twice the first two times. Who cares? <laughs> Very well stated. <laughs> Manziel. Oh, Ego Ferguson got there a little late. That was Anthony Johnson, number 90, with the tackle. Flushed, but still redirected. That's one of the things that have been sold by LSU to their pass rushers. If you go by him, come back and get him. You'll get another shot at him. Just keep running. Third down, seven at the 29. Aggies trail by 14. Mike Matthews will snap it back. Four-man rush again. Manziel pulls up, lets it go. Caught by Darrell Walker at the 21-yard line. Very interesting talking to John Chavis and what he was telling his defensive players that they want to force Manziel to his left. But I have to say what I've watched, Manziel, I don't think I've ever seen anybody better at stopping when he goes to his left and making that sidearm throw. First down, 10. 10-20 10, to go. First down. This time it's Mills on Evans, who is in the slot, lower part of the screen. 
Here he goes. Taken down roughly at the eight yard line. And Malcolm Kennedy is injured. I couldn't tell if Manziel was an attempting a slide there or not. Didn't look like it did it. Didn't look like it. It was Malcolm Kennedy's left knee that got kind of buckled in the, in the middle of that tackle. Kind of slid right into Kennedy himself, didn't Manziel? Yes, he did. Kennedy, who was one of the stars in that uh, signature win a year ago at Alabama right. for the Aggies. Manziel kind of runs out of space here, and he's got Malcolm Kennedy right in front of him, and the two collide. A little bit of a shove by Corey Thompson also caused that collision from behind between Manziel and Johnson. Time has been taken Excuse on Malcolm the field. Kennedy. Yep. Sorry. It's the crazy ones Thanksgiving Day Marathon. Malcolm Kennedy, the uh, fine wide receiver for the Aggies on the bench, getting some medical attention. He was able to walk off by himself. And, and he plays an important spot as you look at the red zone stats here. He's the Verizon red zone stats. A&M, 73% touchdowns. He plays that Ryan Swope spot the, yeah. uh, to the wide side of the field that is an important part of this A&M passing attack. Manziel, 43 yards on the ground. He'll give it off this time, and Molina plunges up the middle and down at the two. Craig Lawson, number six, made the tackle. Impressive drive now. It began when Molina grabbed the kickoff and stepped out at his own eight-yard line. Yeah, Menzel's three for three on this drive. He's actually had two big scrambles, 15-yard penalty. About everything has gone for AM's way once that first pass was completed. Double tight end set for the Aggies. 9-15 remaining in the half. Manziel fires it incomplete to Evans. Yeah, the bad snap threw this playoff. Manziel has to react to the snap and throws him off. So he catches it, makes him turn, and then never really sets his feet to make a wide open throw that time. Could have been an easy touchdown. Third and goal. Three wide right, one top of the screen. Molina is in the backfield with Manziel. Will they try to go one-on-one -on -one to Evans? That's the question. Remember, I questioned him before for not doing it. Doesn't look that way. He's going. It's incomplete. Darrell Walker. I believe he should have had it. Big decision time for Kevin Sumlin now. Looks at the clock. Obviously should have been call, caught. Balls. That's a perfect throw on that one. Blow it away. Aggies will go for it. On fourth down. You cannot vacate the box because you'll get a quarterback draw. LSU will keep linebackers in the middle so he does not run the quarterback draw. Low snap. Manziel retreats, chased, heaves it up. Incomplete. D.J. Welker, number 31, with the pressure on Johnny Manziel. The Welker came unblocked that time. John Chavis played aggressive. Welker comes right up the middle and forces Manziel to retreat instead of getting outside the pocket. Takes his outside shoulder away, forces him back to help, and nobody to throw the ball to. Jake Spavitel, quarterback coach. Talking with Johnny Manziel. Got a feeling Johnny Manziel's a little frustrated. 89-yard drive, no points. This is 
in the West, of course, but things are very fascinating in the SEC East. Missouri, South Carolina, and uh, let's give you the scenario. Missouri has a one-game lead for the moment. They play at Ole Miss tonight. They need to win both of their games. They've got the Aggies in a week. And South Carolina will win the SEC championship because they own the time tiebreaker. They won in double overtime against the Tigers. And uh, South Carolina will be the world's biggest Ole Miss fans tonight. First down 10. Connor Neighbors, Jeremy Hill in the backfield. That's Beckham in motion. Guarded by Devontae Harris, Mettenberger. That's going to be thrown away. Logan Stokes, the third team tight end, the intended receiver, more or less. Well, you know, if you're Cam Cameron calling plays right now, you know, if you get a three and out, don't get a first down, you're going to give Manziel the ball right in scoring field position sure. again. And as frustrating as that last, as you look at Cam right there, the middle calling the plays right there. He is, uh, understands that you can stop him a few times, but you ain't going to stop him all game. Hill the deep back. He follows neighbors to the right side, but not for very far. And a big third down coming up now. That was Gavin Stansbury, number 72, who made the stop. Third and nine. Third down nine. 8.30 to go, and the Tigers lead by 14. And they are out of timeouts. Third down nine, break the huddle, hustle, keep it on the ground. Hill breaks the tackle. First down. No, I don't no, think he's so. not. I'm no, sorry. I don't think so. He's short. It looked like he had enough space to get the first down, but when he bounced it outside, he did not go north and south enough. Goes wide. Now cut it up. And he got pulled from behind that time. That was the play by Obiaha that time, wasn't it? Julian Ob Obiaha, yes. 95. That's a good three and out for that A&M defense. Just short of the fourth, Jamie Keene on to punt from the end zone. Devontae Harris hustles back. Ooh, I think close. he might have either shanked it or got a piece of it. Going to get the ball at about the 23-yard line. Wow. That was Sam Miller, the 12th man, special teams, walk-on, wearing number 12, normally right. number 44. Well, he blocked, if he did get a piece of this one, he had a block for a safety against Mississippi State. I, I think he just shanked it, to tell you the truth. I don't know if it was blocked or not, but ended up going out on the 26-yard line. 13-yard punt. Sam Miller, walk-on special teams player. Time called. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Connor Shaw became the winningest quarterback in South Carolina history today, rolling Coastal Carolina. If Missouri loses to Ole Miss tonight, the Gamecocks will be headed to the SEC Championship. Now back to A&M and LSU. All right, there's Sam Miller, the 12th man out of San Antonio, Texas. Came close to blocking it, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think he got it, but there's no doubt his presence was felt but the ball slides just by his hand and i think this is just unfortunately a shanked ball and as a result of the 13-yard punt manzel there's miller he's won that number 12 for the 11th consecutive week that's a tradition started by jackie sherrill back in the 80s when he was the aggie coach here's manzel no help on evans at all at the bottom of the screen richard robinson has the defensive assignment. Manziel from behind. Daniel Hunter. Huge play. 
Well, Daniil Hunter got the sack, but Mike Evans is not going to understand why he's not getting the football to the outside here. He's open again. I didn't understand it when it was near the goal line why he didn't throw it to him. And I don't quite get it. Man-to-man -man coverage, your big receiver, no safety on that half of the field. Why you just don't chuck one up in the air. Malcolm Kennedy back on the field. Tracy Wolfson reporting that it was a neck injury, not a knee injury. So there he is in the slot. Tipped. It'll be third down. Darrell Walker, the intended receiver. Ball was a little overthrown. Had to throw it inside that time. And Johnny just Man wide. I'm sorry, Johnny Manziel. Five of 18. Six and a half to go. First half. Rush from the corner. Manziel. Heaves it. Darrell Walker. What? Makes the reception. It's going to be fourth and about four or five, six yards here. But again, going to his left. Dwayne Thomas is chasing him. Watch him stop and throw that ball going to his left. Either way, he scrambles. He's a weapon. They have brought the field goal unit on. This will be a 42-yard. And by the way, Connor, Connor McQueen is a new holder. There's the effort from Lambeau. Good. He's now 7 of 8 for the season, having replaced Taylor Bertolette in the middle of the year. Six minutes to go, first half. Aggies on the board. Welcome back, guys. I just saw Johnny Manziel coming off the field, and he was wincing in pain, and it looked to be that right hand, and athletic trainers looking at it for a brief moment. But, guys, in the first drive of the game, he actually seemed to have hurt it. He came off. He was he was moving around his shoulder. I don't know if it was nerve from the shoulder injury that he had, the cold, or he really did hurt it in that first drive, but it seems to have been bothering him this whole half so far and it seemed to just be more aggravated during that drive there. All right, Tracy, thank you. And uh, despite a 13-yard punt by LSU and a very short field, the Aggies had to settle for a field goal. Now Odell Beckham Jr. is deep. Taylor Bertolette is the kickoff artist. Almost half of his kickoffs this year have resulted in touchbacks, 34 of 81. See if he can reach the uh, Aggie band tuba section. Well, they're got the wind behind him. Yeah, they're poised for it. They're ready. <laughs> Beckham Jr., an exciting return specialist. Burn, yes. Usually at this time of the game, since LSU is getting the ball to start the second half, I always point out that it's a big series for the defense to get a stop here. But for AM, if you're off and you're Mettenberger, you know, you get a score here, you get the ball score again, you might put Manziel out of reach. So I think it's a huge series for the LSU offense here. Short kickoff. Beckham coming left. And tackled at the 25. Yeah, but the flag is down. a big penalty because that ball could go back you know it almost the words the point of the foul if it's from the 16 it's going to go back to the eight yard line during the return illegal block below the waist number 14 of the receiving team the path of this is to the goal first down that's Terrence McGee, the running back. And actually, he slipped on the play when he was trying to block. Watch Terrence right here. He's had a couple long runs. As he tries to plant and block, his feet go out from under him. 
And that's what they called the block below the waist. And so officially from the nine now. Yeah, big difference, 25 to the nine or eight yard line, whatever it is. And that is uh, now you're looking at, do we have to give the ball back to Manziel again in this half? McGee stays on the field as the running back. Copeland is the fullback, number 44. And Mettenberger in at quarterback. Delay. Oh, Copeland God. moved. It was 44 offense. Half the distance to the goal remains first down. JC Copeland that time just moved or flinched before the snap. And that time, Texas A&M put 10 men in the box. They were begging Mettenberger to throw. Watch 44, fullback. Yep, flinched just enough that he's going to get called. First down, 14. Play action, Mettenberger. He is not a scrambler. Yeah, and, and play action was being kind. It was a busted play that time. Okay. Nobody out for a pass, goes the wrong way, or the fullback goes the wrong way or something. But this has been a disastrous, with a six minutes to go to finish off the half, they get a penalty on the kickoff, they get a flinch penalty, and now they got second and long. Understand, they give the ball back to Manziel. You remember at the end of the half a year ago, it was a late touchdown by LSU that changed the complexion of that game. Mettenberger goes deep right side. Got a man out there. It's Beckham, and he cannot hold on. I thought that was defended well. He might have come up with that, but Floyd Raven, I think, knocked it away. Beckham holds off the defender. Was it Devontae Harris? Yes, Devontae Harris. Good coverage by Harris. Tracking down the ball. Grabbed his arm, though, on the play and got away with it, didn't he? When yeah. you saw it in ISO and you see Beckham get up and go, come on, make the call. Well, a couple of mental errors have cost LSU, and they're now facing a third and 13. They got away with a hold. Blitz threatened, blitz coming, flag thrown. Now then. It's going to be five more yards. Well, half the distance again. Full start, number 70 offense. Half the distance to the goal. The offensive coordinator is Cam Cameron. And he was telling us yesterday he was the head coach at Indiana and a good friend of Coach Bob Knight. And at the end of the game against Alabama, there were a few mental errors. Bob Knight called Coach Cameron and said, we are making dumb mistakes. <laughs> He's taking a partnership with Cam, hasn't Yes. He? Well, they've made a few here. Third and 16. Rush coming, Mettenberger lets it go. Caught by Beckham. And that little turn at the edge has gotten them out of a huge hole. What a throw. I mean, you can't throw a ball any better than this. Protection up front, Beckham to the bottom. Look at that cushion being given down here. He knows where he wants to go. Delivers it right on the money. The Shazer Everett misses the tackle. Gave way too much. The ball is put right on the shoulder pads. Just can't do it any better than that. The biggest throw of the game so far by Zach Mettenberger or either quarterback for that matter. And a first down on a 19-yard gain. It's McGee as the running back. Play action. Mettenberger with all day. And they're stumbling and a flag is thrown. Devontae Harris. <laughs> on Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, it's not an easy job he's got. He's got really one of the best wide receivers in the country, and he's got to cover him on 70 yards all over the field. There's another flag in the offensive backfield. Gets his hands on him, and then... Does he get tangled up with his legs? But that time they called it. Yep. It appears his right arm. He grabbed him with his right arm. He got away with the first one, but you're right, Vern. There's two there flags. Two fouls on the play. Personal foul, rushing the passer, number 48, defense. Pass 
interference, number one defense. Either of those penalties are 15 yards and automatic first down. So it'll be a 30-yard penalty against Texas A&M. Zach gets hit by Darian Claiborne. Oh, yeah. He launched at him after he let the ball go. So you get 15 yards for pass interference, and then you get 15 yards for roughing the passer. And less than a minute ago, LSU was facing third and 18. His biggest throw of the game so far, no doubt about it. See, they marked only the one 15 yard penalty. 15 yards, not back to back. So the 15 yard penalty, I didn't hear Tom Ritter say yeah. either of these penalties. I thought he said both. Yeah. First down 10. McGee. He's been a little more effective than Jeremy Hill, hasn't he, running between the tackles? He had that one big run, but he does seem more committed downhill. Connor Neighbors now doing his job, played a good physical football game, leading the way. Copeland has been kind of the backup. He used to be the main guy. Neighbors number 43, and here is Beckham coming to the near side. Yeah, that same bounce out, though, has not been working for LSU. The Texas A&M defense has forced it wide and then run it down. Well, the last third down play, great throw, but the Shazer Everett missed the tackle on Beckham. Now, can they get a stop? Third down four, flag. Is that a good omen and a bad omen for LSU? Substitution infraction on the offense. 12 players in formation and breaking the huddle. That's a five-yard penalty, third down. That's another mental error for the Tigers. Well, Dylan Gordon is running off the field late. He must have been the extra guy out there, but boy, it has been, it was mistakes. A couple weeks ago, we saw against Alabama and mistakes again today. Now, Mettenberger and Beckham bailed them out last time. Let's see if it can be bailed out again. Third down nine after the penalty. Alfred Blue is the running back on one side. Jeremy Hill the other. Across the middle, got it. Jeremy Hill to the 43. Well, great protection first off, because Mettenberger actually came to a second choice. He wanted to go to Beckham. He came to the running back late, and kind of a funny matchup. Mark Snyder kind of gambled with the pass rush and ended up with Gavin Stansbury on the tailback. Metten Excuse me, Vern. Sure. Mettenberger went through his reads and ended up with a perfect matchup. And the clock at 220 now. Again, LSU used all three of its timeouts in the first quarter. Keep it on the ground. Tackle made on Jeremy Hill. And uh, Gavin Stansbury lost his helmet, so he immediately heads to the sideline, has to sit out one play. Just think about this, the success of this drive. We talked about it. It started out so bad. But if LSU is able to get out of this half without letting Manziel come back out on the field, a huge win for LSU. This drive began at the six-minute mark. Second down, eight. Hill the running back. Mettenberger to throw. Swindry, touchdown LSU. With the catch, he goes across a thousand yards, joining Beckham. Two 1,000 yard receivers for LSU. Well, the running game is paying off, and the play action pass. I mean, we're watching basically 1970 football here. 
I mean, this is the way it was done by Cam Cameron, Les Miles, Bo Schembechler. This is the same offense that Mark Snyder was warned about. What a beautiful wheeled route by Jarvis Landry. Delahousay with the extra point. This one clean. SEC multiple thousand yard receivers. Doring and Hilliard, 96 of Florida. Gaffney and Caldwell for the Gators in 2001. And now Odell Beckham joins by Jarvis Landry. Well, one false snap step. Stepping in for the run. Watch what happens. Landry in the slot will take the touchdown. One step. That's all it was by Howard Matthews, and he never had a chance. Beautiful throw, great play action, and a wonderful call by Cam Cameron. How about the drive? Six minutes, and they score the touchdown. Tim Brando in New York, dubious history in Gainesville. This is Skyler Morningwig on fourth and three, looking for Solomon Patton. It's incomplete. Georgia Southern becomes the first FCS school to ever beat Florida 26-20. It ensures their first losing season in Gainesville since 1979, and the howling for Will Muschamp will get a lot louder. Back to Vernon Gibbs. All right, Timmy, we all remember when Ron Zook was the head coach at Florida, having surpassed, or succeeded, rather, Steve Spurrier. And uh, in his last year, he said there is noise in the system. Boy. I remember when Will Muschamp was at LSU and he told the story that Nick Saban had scheduled Georgia Southern. Okay, the same team, and they ran the wishbone. And Will went up to Nick and said, have you seen this team? Nick watched it for five minutes, walked in the athletic director's office and said, we ain't playing these guys. <laughs> I, I do remember that. Yes. <laughs> well, Will Muschamp. Uh, a friend of all of ours and going through a very tough, tough time in Gainesville right now. He served here under Saban as his defensive coordinator. Ultimately wound up with Mac Brown at Texas. That didn't work out. And uh, now his team losing to Georgia Southern. are unaffected by the weather. Harrison with a kickoff. Trey Williams with the tackle. Well, Vern, that last drive again, third and 18, two big third down plays, well protected, a missed tackle by DeShazer Everett. That would have been short of the first down, would have forced a punt. The next third down, Mettenberger stays with his reads, comes back, drops it off the hill on a third and nine, and of course a play action pass ends up with the score. Mantell with 92 seconds to go in the half. He's got a man down there and overthrows him. LaQuiviante Gonzalez. Well, it's, there's no easing up here, is there, by LSU. They are continuing to play aggressive defense and man-to-man -man coverages. Second down, 10. Manziel now 6 of 20. Kind of a low snap. Manziel lobs it across the middle to the aforementioned Lacrudiante Gonzalez. And he is out of bounds with the first down. Well, 
<laughs> just kind of funny. I mean, you never want to turn down a touchdown, obviously. But when Landry scored, I went, oh, no. Man, that was going to get the ball back. <laughs> Maybe he should have fell down on a one-inch line and scored three plays later. <laughs> and then, you know Johnny Manziel loves these two-minute drills. Comes the rush from the corner. This one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Cuts right in for the score. No flags. Touchdown, AM. I tell you, John Chavis played man to man to the outside. That's a true freshman, Tredavious White. He has no help. There is no safety behind him. Oops. Slips on the play, and he's gone. There's nobody behind to help. Lawson comes late, but you're not going to make that tackle. That's why I was kind of laughing about that touchdown. You gave him time. And the extra point is good. <laughs> college, college football something, I gotta say. You know, these guys are just good enough and just bad enough <laughs> that the plays are unbelievable. Well, that drive took all of 29 seconds. <laughs> Don't forget the Geico halftime report coming up. We'll go back to the studio. Tim and the guys for scores and highlights from around uh, the country. Don't you got a feeling that this thing is going to go all the way to the end, just yes. like the rest of our games? I do now. I wasn't so sure 27 seconds exactly. ago. Exactly. Well, I mean, I was half joking, you know, but I mean, you can't turn down a touchdown, but, you know, if LSU ended up with the ball and scored on the last few plays of the half, it's over. Now, I don't quite get what you know LSU gambled playing man coverage his safety was you know 40 yards away from that catch Bertolette Taylor Bertolette will kick off Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, oh my god he's gonna do it oh well, yeah. they, they, they called him. Second and third thoughts. He said, I never put my knee knee down, and he was going to try it. I guess you cannot fake going down here. Once he stalls, it's over. Whistle blew. Yeah, Tom Ritter was very yeah. quick. Yeah, one, one more look at the safety help. Craig Lawson is right here. He's on the far hash. This is the matchup. And, you know, that's the matchup Mike Evans had earlier that I didn't understand Menzel threw why he didn't throw it. He got sacked on first down on a throw just like that he could have made. So the touchback gives Mettenberger and LSU the ball at the 25. As Beckham Jr. in motion. Hill gets the toss into the secondary. And a little jawing going on on the near side. Well, that continues. What that's what they're trying to get Jeremy Hill to do right here. The patented play for LSU, the short inside toss. Just take it up strong. Again, uh, LSU out of timeouts. 46 seconds. To go. Very interesting that with a senior quarterback that's going to be drafted in the first round, you ain't going to give him a chance to come back. Hill. And first down, clock will stop. Now will they allow him to throw a few here? The other guy scored in 29 seconds. Late flag, huh? Yep. I think Trey Turner is the guy that's going to get called on the play. He's blocking Darian Claiborne, number 48, I believe. And a little. Oh, low. yeah, there's enough right there, too. It is. Trey Claiborne, excuse me, Darian Claiborne and Trey Turner. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 56, offense, that's a 15-yard penalty, first and 10.
And that should probably end the half unless they want to throw very deep. And, I, you know, I might take a shot. As good as Beckham is at jumping up and making plays as athletic as he is, I might try to line up in a, in a real tight formation and throw one deep. Seven penalties now against LSU. Nope, 20, they're going to take yeah. a knee. Yep. with the lead at the break, 21-10. Johnny Manziel, ineffective for the most part, but given an opportunity with 92 seconds to go, found Darrell Walker after Tredavious White, the defender, slipped. And let's go down to Tracy, who's with Kevin Summer. Thanks so much. That last score is basically what you've been waiting for, but what can you attribute the struggles on offense to early on in this game? Well, we've been a little bit off. You know, we've missed some passes by, uh, by a little bit. There. I mean, but they've got a lot to do with it. Tight coverage, we got to be able to compete and make plays. Uh, third downs, we couldn't convert. So we got to stay on the field and, and make up some of these third downs. We also had a couple penalties that set us behind the chains. We saw Johnny getting his hand worked on a little bit. Is there anything to worry about there? No, that's been going on for a while. So, you know, it's, it's part of the game this time of the year. He'll be all right. All right, appreciate it. Oh, thanks. thanks. All right, Tracy, thank you, Kevin Sumlin. And uh, after Trey Turner got the penalty for the extracurricular stuff, had a brief chat with his head coach, Les Miles. As in, what are you thinking? Yeah, right at the 50-yard line, too. That's the end of the half. 21-10 here. LSU leads. Let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. All right, Vern, thank you. Coming up. Right to Death Valley Tiger Stadium Baton Rouge on a nasty day cold windy had rain about an hour before the game it has subsided now let's go down to Tracy with Les Miles coach your defense the question mark coming in but what can you say about the job they've done today against Johnny Manziel in this offense well you know it's it's not necessarily where you line them up and in all the scheme it's that they're really giving great effort they're they're playing lights out Seven penalties, though, for 66 yards. How much was that discussed in the locker room to get cleaned up in the second half? Uh, it was discussed in all three phases, no question. And it's, you know, what happens is these young guys are excited about playing football, and it's we got to make sure that we seal the, the, the finish rather than have a celebration in the middle of the game. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank Odell Beckham is back to return the kickoff to open the second half. Johnny Manziel will have to wait. Had uh, really modest numbers in the first half, eight for 22 for 151 yards. Beckham, the ever dangerous return man, about three yards into the end zone. Bertolette will kick off. Underway, third quarter. Well, not quite yet. Well, LSU is lining up with eight people close, discouraging an onside kick to start the second half. Well, Kevin Sumlin told us last night, Gary, he expected some trickery right. in well, they, special teams. They play. tried that one on the fake field goal on fourth down. Remember that one? Yeah. But just by alignment, LSU is saying, don't try it. We're ready. Eight up close. This one will chase Beckham all the way deep into the end zone. And so the ball will come out to the 25. The Zach Mettenberger and the uh, LSU offense gets it to start the third quarter. Uh, expectations? 
for the rest of the game? Sure. Hold on tight. It's going <laughs> to. I mean, why not? I mean, we've seen everything this year. I think that helped Manziel's psyche okay. to finish that first half the way it did. I mean, you know, it, it, I don't buy all the momentum stuff. I understand team gets on gets on runs during the game, but I think the best thing that LSU believes about the first half, they ran the ball for 142 yards, and it opened up some easy avenues to throw for big plays. And they start at the 25 here, reverse to Beckham. He goes right, tripped up, and then hit and dragged out of bounds by Devontae Harris. Well, there's different ways to get your elite players their hand on the football if you don't want to throw it to them. This time, they did open it up with the reverse, and I thought defended fairly well by AM again. And you know, it's it's the pounding and the commitment to stop the run but with by extra bodies that eventually pays off for the LSU passing game. Second down five after the pickup by Beckham. Landry in the slot, Beckham the outside man. Here's a toss. Hill coming left, got a big opening. Out to the 47, 48 perhaps after they spot it. Well, it may look like an option, but I guarantee it's not. It's just a quick pitch to the outside, a little action inside. Odell Beckham blocking to the wide side of the field. But remember, the AM defensive back, that time it was Harris, he's playing man to man coverage. He's looking at Beckham the whole way. He is not committing to stop the run. And a first down 10. The ball spotted at the 46-yard line. It's man-to-man -man out there. There is no safety. Everybody you see in the picture, that's all they got. Mettenberger going deep, a little hitch and go. And uh, well overthrown. Yeah, Beckham gave up on the play that upset uh, Zach that time. First half, you can see that Johnny Manziel finished up well. I mean, that was really the last play, the bulk of his yards right there. Zach Mettenberger had it easier. Made that big third down pass out of the end zone, and then he had some open receivers to hit. The big receivers not catching the ball I mean the first play of the game or whatever first series Evans catches his lone pass and then two fourth down tries one was a drop pass that should have been a touchdown second down 10 McGee is the running back he had the big run in the first half that was 65 yards and he does a nice job here interesting call here Remember the penetration. I, I, I guarantee you Mark Snyder, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M, will attack the line of scrimmage. Will it be a passing down for LSU? Or will they try to power it through with a running game? Third and four. country in third down percentage and they again no safety no help Landry starts in motion Harris follows him and whistle before the snap. gonna be on LSU again from third and four to third and nine all starts on the offense not all players got set prior to the snap Five-yard penalty remains third down. Another mental error. I think Landry might have gone in motion before everybody got set. He's moving. He doesn't get set long enough, and that's what the call is, before he went in motion again. And so third down nine. That's the eighth penalty against LSU in the ballgame. Blitz picked up nicely. Mettenberger with time drills it into Landry's hands. And, and Vern, you couldn't use a better descriptive term of drills it in there. I mean, I was out at practice Thursday watching him throw the football and drooling. I, I, I mean, I, this is a major league arm, as good as anybody you'll see on any level of football. And if you talk to Cam Cameron, as we did yesterday, yep. he said, I just have fallen in love with this guy, didn't he say that? He said, he's stolen my soul. Yep. How about that? Up the middle. Oh, he 
tripped and fell. Alfred Blue. Did he trip over his own feet? I think he did. Alfred Blue up the middle, follow number 43. A great block by him. Yes, tripped up just a bit by Claiborne and never regathered. I think 48 Claiborne just tipped him and he could not regain his balance. First down 10, however, on a 13 yard drive. And they've got the ball inside the 25. 182 yards yep. rushing. And they rushed from 147 in the first half. That is a big number. Less miles. Now the play action. Deep down the middle. Double coverage and dropped at the last minute. Actually, it was stripped out of the arms of Odell Beckham. And uh, uh, Howard Matthews does a good job here because in the pre-read, Zach Mettenberger doesn't think he has a safety in the play. He thinks it's one-on-one -on -one to the outside with Devontae Harris, and Matthews gets in on the play. And from where he came from, because he was lined up close to the line of scrimmage, I could understand Zach not seeing him. And Odell Beckham is down at the uh, end of the back of the end zone. Such a great player. Tracy? I am standing right behind Odell Beckham Jr. right now, and he immediately pointed to his lower back. They are just massaging his right now. I don't know if it's a cramp or a tailbone, but right now he looks to be in a lot of pain. All right, thank you, Trace. Time taken while they tend to Odell Beckham. 21-10, LSU. Odell Beckham limping as he headed directly to the LSU locker room. And uh, Gary, let's take another look at how he was injured at the end of this play. Yeah, well, first of all, remember it on Landry, Jarvis Landry's touchdown, Howard Matthews stepped in. Well, this time you can see this open space that Zach sees. He doesn't step in. He goes back and becomes the second defender. Mettenberger never saw him. He's really the guy that saved the touchdown on the play because Harris would not have had a chance. I can tell you that when Mettenberger let that ball go through uh, from his hand, he thought he had a touchdown. And Odell Beckham in the locker room right now. We'll get a report as soon as we can. It's second down and 10 from the 25. Alfred Blue is the running back. Connor Neighbors had played most of the way at fullback, and he's done a superb job, but this time he can't get the block to freeze Blue. Devontae Harris comes up and makes the tackle. Well, let's take a look at the uh, efforts of both quarterbacks so far. Well, you know, they were both were a year ago as we started the broadcast talking about they had their worst statistical game in this game a year ago. And different styles here for Zach Mettenberger. He's probably doing his job a little bit better than Manziel is right now. Obviously, the LSU pass rush and everything has a bit of a, an effect on every part of the game. But so far, LSU likes the way they've handled Manziel. Third down, 10. Traven Durrell in place of Odell Beckham. Mettenberger down the middle. Got it! Jarvis Landry. First and goal, Tigers. Jarvis Landry is a fearless wide receiver. He may need be a half step slower than Beckham, but he is quick and he has great hands. And watch this rocket throw again. I mean, you're looking at one of the great arms that you'll ever see. He put it in between three defenders, and you just can't hardly defend. Look at that maze that he threw that ball through. Almost want to stop it right there and show you the type of risk he took on that throw. First down goal and another. Man, oh, man. All start, number 65, offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. Can't blame it on the crowd noise. No, because we have a lot of empty seats here because of the weather. Yeah, I think it was Gerald Hawkins this time, number six. Everybody's taking a turn on that offensive line, kind of flinching. Yep, there he was. Yep. 
That is the fourth ball start penalty. Hard to believe, really. I mean, you work with a quarterback all year. I did it again. Oh, man. This time it was Trey Turner. Ball start, number 56, offense, five-yard penalty. And, th and these are huge points we have seen. Remember when last week, when Auburn went down in those red zones and ended up kicking field goals, how that became a big story at the end. At Mettenberger using a hard count to try to at least declare what AM's defense is going to do, and he gets another five yard penalty. Well, Odell Beckham is back on the sidelines. It's one on one coverage. Excuse me, Vern, to the outside. Hill, the running back. Mettenberger rolls out. He's chased by Stansbury and has to let it go. Incomplete. Logan Stokes, the third team tight end, was the closest to it. Second down goal. Well, just one more look at that pass. Watch him rip it through this area right here and all the bodies that he's going to gun this ball through. Look at that. Three different players. And that ball is right. If you don't have a big league arm, you have no chance to complete that throw. And the 11th play of the drive coming up. Beckham back on the field. Up at the top, there are three wide receivers. He's the outside man. to the four-yard line. Yeah, they're, they're back where they were. Before the two falls. Yeah. Yep. Howard Matthews a part of that defensively. So here we go again with a third down, third and goal. 9.20 to go, the opening drive. And Mark Snyder has to believe if they get a stop here, it's going to force a field goal because it's a 14-point game. Less will be forced to take a three. LSU, 8 of 11 on third downs. Quick snap. Mettenberger pumps once into the end zone. Broken up by DeShazer Everett, who got position on Odell Beckham. So 21-10, my fault. I thought it was 21-14. Just looked cross-eyed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I've never done that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so 11-point game, you got to keep the field goal. It was me trying to say they got to make it a 14-point game. Delahousse will kick 10 of 11 for the year. Started by hitting his first nine. That is a school record. And then inexplicably missed from 31 yards out against Furman. Self-inflicted. You have to believe that yep. LSU was almost counting seven points, and AM gets a stop. Little emotion shown by the Tigers of LSU. They should have had a touchdown. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Kia. Chick-fil-A. And by Bud Light. Well, it has become Saturday night in Death Valley. Darkness has descended. The wind has not subsided. All of us looking forward to the conclusion of this one. And then a week from today, we go back to Auburn for the Iron Bowl. About as significant a matchup as ever has been completed. As Alabama, number one against sixth-ranked Auburn next Saturday, 3.30 here on CBS. Some people here are not aware that it's cold. I'm guessing they're not thirsty. <laughs> I was going to speculate why, but I, I may stay away from that. James Hairston out of Dallas Jesuit will kick off. Specialist for the LSU Tigers, Trey Williams and Ben Molina right. are deep. Into the wind, and those kickoffs have been kind of floating down to about the 10-yard line at the most into the wind. So, 
will be held. Equally nice. Let's go to the studio for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Here's Tim. Vern, one guy that might be outside your radar is Derek Carr, but the young man is leading Fresno State to a possible BCS party crasher. Four touchdown passes, over 300 yards and counting against New Mexico. Business as usual today for A.J. McCarron, 13 of 16. He's now bypassed Jay Barker for the school mark and overall wins, and Bryce Petty will try to keep Baylor on beat tonight. Back to you. All right, Tim, quick snap. Up the middle, Trey Williams. And he is shifted. Boy. Yes, he is. Craig Lostrom finally hauls him down, but he's across the 42. Well, that's the extra weapon that Manziel needs in this second half. You know, this is a football game. You look up there, we've done nothing right. One big pass, down 14 points, no big deal. First down 10 after the 11-yard game. Low snap. Manziel has it. A lot of time. Yeah, let, it, throw. Yep, let it fly. Intended for Darrell Walker. Would have taken a Mettenberger type throw on this one. The ball, remember, it's going down wind and it just kind of sailed at him. Lost and just continued into the end zone and then took a knee in the end zone, so he was injured on that defensive effort. A&M kind of wanted a flag on it. Uh, I think he turned, hit him with his shoulder, almost hit him with his arm on the play, to tell you the truth. I think it was a, a decent pull-off, but Lawson took the fruit of the hit, I guess. Yeah, there might have been an inadvertent helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision. Did it hit him with the helmet? Yeah, I think he did not have. see it. Yeah. See if that is what happened. I saw the A&M bench react. I don't, I don't know. I didn't see it there. Maybe a different angle. Yes, it did. Yeah. Glanced off him. I guess Lawson probably just got dizzy on the play. So he is uh, on the sidelines for LSU. Second and 10 from the 41-yard line. Tigers lead the Aggies 24-10 midway through the third. Option play, left side, Trey Williams. Oh, was that defended? Tackle. Was that defended, wasn't it? Might even get holding on Jake Matthews on the play as well. Lamine Barrel smelled out the play. Watch him attack the option. Go wide quickly. He's got Jake Matthews. Does he push him from behind on the play? He does. Pushes him right into the tackle. Mm. And a flag. Yeah, they're going to. Yeah, you can see right there. Ferguson says, we don't want it. We already got a negative play. We'll take the During play. During the run, illegal block in the back, number 75. Texas A&M, that penalty is declined. It brings up the third down. Flag on Jake Matthews, the All-American left tackle. Third and long, and A&M is two for eight in the game. They've got three wide to the right, one top of the screen. They've only gotten one pass in the hands of Mike Evans. That was on the opening series of the game. Blitz. Manziel wobbles a little bit, almost intercepted. Is it? Is it? No. Richard Robinson, who's had a great afternoon. Well, a miscommunication. Manziel was show throwing a back shoulder throw, and Evans was going down. Now, did his feet get in? Well, I don't know. His left foot was out. Was his right foot in? Manziel's throwing back shoulder. Evans is going deep. Now, does it come down? No, I don't, no, think, I don't so. think so. Nope. <laughs> Look at this angle right here. He's, he's kneeling down. He's leaning down, trying to see the ball and the foot at the same time. Good job. Lamine Barrow is the injured player, the linebacker. Look, look, look at the referee leaning, leaning. 
Well, you know, look at that. Isn't that nice? His right foot might have dragged and made contact right there. Oh, it's happening so fast, I yeah. can't tell. And look at the effort right. by the by the two officials. I can't really tell. Both of the judges are, are trying to see it. Does he have the football? Like, clearly he has it right now. He has it. Now, let's see if his right foot comes down before his left. Yeah, he might that, get that. that They're going to review that. that. Field was an incomplete pass. That For play is under further review. This is really not fair because Vern has a much bigger monitor than I do. Okay, he uh, saw that as totally uh, not fair. <laughs> well, it's one of the <laughs> benefits of Somebody's seniority. Somebody take a shot of this monitor. <laughs> <laughs> he might get this. I think so. Nice eye. Well, both of did he have? Did he clearly have the ball? That yeah. might be the, the other part that the replay official is looking at. Did he have total possession? Did he double catch it? Again, Doyle Jackson. I think you're going to win this one, Vern. I credit it all to the large <laughs> monitor. <laughs> Yeah. Remember, it was called incomplete on the field. So it has to be. Irrefutable. Here's Tom Ritter. I bet it's overturned. After further review, the defender got his feet down inbound. I think they got it right. I really do. I think they got that one right. Well, let's see what happens at the bottom right here. You could see that Rashad Robinson is looking at the quarterback. Evans thinks, I'm going to go deep. Robinson sees the ball thrown. Manziel obviously is throwing back shoulder. Evans doesn't realize it. It's the first turnover of the football game. Johnny Manziel, really mediocre numbers today. And that last pass reversed on the original call turns into an interception. And that leads us to the duck and his appearance for the first time. The Aflac trivia question, Archie Griffin, the only player to win back-to-back -back Heisman trophies. Of course, Johnny Manziel trying to get back to uh, New York and a second Heisman trophy. Who came the closest to repeating. That's the Aflac mm. trivia question. Yeah. I don't need a big monitor to know this one. Uh, you better know it. <laughs> First down 10. Alfred Blue is the running back, number four. It's out to the 45 yard line. Game of seven. Well, something always pops up in the game that becomes a storyline. You know, we had two of the best third down offenses in all of college football. LSU is number one. A&M is number four in the game. LSU has been eight for 12. A&M two for nine with an interception. And remember the two big third down plays for the touchdown. It's been the story of the game. Well, it was a third and 18 conversion into a 19 yard game that led to a long drive toward the end of the first half, Jarvis Landry. Here's the toss. Oh, nice play inside. Yep. Ivan Robinson, number 89, was the first man there for the game uh, for the Aggies. Yeah, he kind of jumps around this time inside and gets the play. Wow, what a play by Robinson. Third and three. 
ought to be cold. Well, you know, I think if you get com you know committed to being painted, yeah. you go with it. <laughs> I mean, you spend all that time. Was that, uh, did you do that at per when you were playing? Yeah, right. Did you know people at Purdue no, who did that? And Christy didn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and three. Mettenberg oh got him in second. I'll tell you. The Shazer Everett is having his problems today. Missed a tackle, and this time missed a coverage by eight yards on a quick slant. Gets to, to totally abused at the line of scrimmage. It was not a great throw, and Beckham plucked it out of midair. Guess his back or tailbone or whatever it is is okay, right? Yeah, I think. Remember now, we talked about this a couple of hours ago when we came on the air. Beckham emulated Johnny Manziel for the scout team against LSU's defense. He ran them ragged. Here's Blue again. We thought there might even be a chance to see Beckett run the Wildcat today, but not so far. Back to the studio for Liberty Mutual Insurance Update. Vern, one of the best running backs in the country is Kadeem Carey for Rich Rodriguez. A fourth touchdown for him today, 188 yards. He is absolutely ripping Oregon apart. And yes, Stanford is leading Cal in the big game, and they could be headed to the Pac-12 North Championship and the Pac-12 title as a result. Back to you. Thank you, Tim. Second down and five here, 24-10. LSU Gary has now rushed for two. Yeah, Andre, you could tell that, that's what they circled ever since that Alabama game when Nick Saban says we challenged our team to win the line of scrimmage. That does not sit well around here. Kenny Hilliard, number 27, gets this carry. Line of scrimmage. These guys have been jumping off sides a few times, but they've also been blocking people. That time Trey Turner. You know, what are you going to do if you're less miles? You might want to yell at your guys, but that's your guys. Yes. You need those guys. 55 yards on the ground for the Aggies. LSU pounding. And they lead 24-10, another first down and 10 at the 25-yard line. Going into a very, very stiff breeze. Left side. Hilliard again. Again, this is a very young Texas A&M football team. Okay, a lot of youth that will eventually be bigger, stronger SEC football players. When you match up in one of these games on the road where the team just pile drives you, it's a tough matchup. That's why Manziel has so much pressure on him. He has to put 40 up. He knows it at yes. the start of every game. Yes. They also have not lost a road game in two years, the Aggies. Last road loss was in 2011. Jarvis Landry comes in motion. Oh boy, the battle at the line of scrimmage. Here's Mettenberger, he's got a man. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be a penalty, though, right at the right when the two receivers were going in motion. I mean, yeah, Devontae Harris just, I think, him, he just yeah, runs right him. there. Yeah, runs right over him, pushes him. And then the last part is where he gets the penalty. The first part would have been okay. It's at the end of him. Now well, that's a, an afternoon of frustration. Right. The initial shot was fine. Personal foul, hangs to the face, number one, defense, has the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, getting a little coaching on the sidelines. And on the penalty, you sure you're the quarterback. What are you going to tell your offensive lineman here right now before you break? The Listen, know the snap count. <laughs> Keep your composure. We don't want Bob Knight calling Coach Cameron again. <laughs> stupid, stupid, right? Yes. <laughs> now they maintain their composure. Uh, good defense. Good yeah. head on. I think it was Darian Claiborne at least got a piece of it, number 48. 
Taken out the point of attack, runs through the block, and what a job, huh? That's a freshman linebacker. Second down nine. And Devontae Harris still getting lectured on the sidelines. Manziel hasn't seen much of the field in this third quarter. Kenny Hilliard is the deep back. Connor Neighbors has had a fine afternoon at the fullback position. Quick flip. Odell Beckham. Floyd Raven with the tackle. Well, this is just trust. You throw it before you even know he's going to be open. DeShazer Everett says, you know, Devante, I understand why you hit the guy in the face. I'm tired of him too right now. <laughs> he's too good. Yes. Now he's going to uh, talk to the bench on the near side. Travis Dixon comes in as an extra tight end. Here's a footnote for you. The tight ends have zero touchdowns for LSU this year. There were zero touchdowns last year. They beat the play for, and they've got a touchdown with Kenny Hilliard. Well, that's the fourth different tailback we've seen run the ball. And foul number 43. Balls in the end zone. Delahousse with the extra point. Fruge will hold it. Up and through. Thirty-one ten. Well, you're pretty much sure what you're going to get. Just follow 43, power back. Point of attack, fall into the end zone. This time it was Hilliard. LSU was dominating. Johnny Manziel, only one series in the third quarter. It ended with an interception, Gary. He's had a very difficult well, day. Yes, and it's been from every level. The pass rush, the linebacker blitzing, the man-to-man -man coverage. Every throw has been contested. Every drop has been angle blitz from defensive backs, linebackers, and then the man coverage. I think that's been key. We saw it blow up in their face at the end of the first half. But Chavis has been committed to covering a man-to-man, -man, and it has worked. Eight for 24, 151. And just to go back to the opening of this program, his roughest game as an Aggie starter was against LSU at College Station last year. The only time he's uh, not scored a rushing touchdown or thrown a touchdown pass. Now, Hairston is going to get some help holding the ball. Jason Collins is out there. Well, just remember what Les always says, right, Vern? Death Valley at night where dreams come to die. That's right. There's a lot of dreams still for Johnny Menzel and his football team. Just remember this. They were down 21 to Alabama in the fourth quarter. Pulled to within seven. Still a lot of time. Into the wind. This one will reach the end zone. And they will bring it out. Trey Williams. Oh, the ball. Yes, it did. I think the Aggies got it back. Ball went flying on that play. Taj Jones is the man who made the contact and forced the fumble. Boom. Right on the football. And I'm very fortunate. You got everybody going away from the football and they go back and cover it. <laughs> Hairston, the kickoff specialist. That one 
is caught by Travis Labhart. Ricky Jefferson with the tackle. Manziel pumps once, lets it go. Evans with only his second catch of the day. Well, Kevin Sumlin, when he talks about Johnny Manziel, he says there's no stage too big for Manziel. We're going to find out. Because it's going to be a mighty big comeback to do it on this field. Third and five. One twelve to go, third quarter. Robinson... Again on Evans, bottom of the screen. On third down. Yes! How about Lavard? How about that one? That was... Goes up, knows he's going to get hit on this play. Manziel gets good protection, elevates the throw. Lavard goes out and gets it. Manziel. Look at him, protect the ball. And while they hurry to first down, Archie Griffin, the only player to win back-to-back -back Heisman trophies, closest to repeating Billy Sims, Gary's old teammate with the Detroit Lions. Lamine Barrow with a contact on that one. As we said, Billy Sims won it in 78, finished second in 79. Second down and six. They might not get the play completed before the end of the quarter. Yep. And now they get to go into the wind. We finished three on a Saturday night in Death Valley. We'll return after this word from your local station. Welcome back to Death Valley Tiger Stadium. Oh, that guy. If you're going to paint yourself and come to the game, you cannot put a coat on. It's against the rules. Well, anyway, it is a little chilly. Fourth quarter, 31-10. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, and the Aggies with a second down and six. Here's Manziel near side, and it is complete for the first down. Well, we've seen him do it before. Right. What does Johnny Manziel have to do here? I, I think number one is resist his own urges to try to do too much. Just kind of take a book from Aaron Murray. Mm -hmm. Just take what's there, make a first down, make an easy throw, you know, a little bite of the apple each time because Manziel's instincts are to go for the big play. I think if he takes what's available, you got to figure LSU is going to back up a half an inch, be happy with, you know, passes completed in front of them, just kind of methodically matriculate the ball down the field. That one's for you. That's I one. like that. <laughs> Visions of Hank Strand yeah, dancing in my on head. The pass, number 56 offense, five-yard penalty, remains second out. The legendary Hank Stram, who uh, was a New Orleans resident when he passed away, led the Kansas City Chiefs to Super Bowl IV and the victory. The speed of LSU's defense is really a story here. That front three, the front four really are running. Second down, 11. Nope. Labhart looking for a flag, doesn't get one. Dwayne Thomas was defending. It'll be third down. Oh, he, Labhart is saying he grabbed me by the jersey just as he turned. I think he did. Third and 11. Early moments, fourth quarter. And Manziel takes off. Oh, God. 
Lamine Barrow with the tackle. But he got the first down with a gain of 13. Well, he's got throwing instincts, and he's got unbelievable scrambling instincts. It's like a he's got a sixth sense about him being able to go in the direction and understand the pass rush and be able to scramble up the middle like that. 31-10, LSU first down and 10. Manziel, right side. Evans with a stiff arm on Robinson. That's one of the few that Evans has won today. Third catch. Second and seven. Hasn't played well. In his two games against LSU, blitz coming, Manziel darts out to the left. DJ Welter giving chase, and that one wobbled when it left his hand. Had a guy wide open over the middle, but the pass rush early forces him out of the pocket, spins out, and then as he throws his ball, really had nothing on that one, did he? That one. Now remember, he is throwing into the wind. So that one just kind of died out. Third down, seven. Corner blitz. When set up, they try the screen, but no, sir. Brandon Williams got the ball. Yeah, Deion Jones was all over that. Right. I mean, they just keep bringing more and more players out on the field that can run for LSU. Right. When we visited with Les yesterday, he goes, we're going to be good. We've got great young players. I'm going to emphasize young. And we're going to get better and better and better. This program is in great shape. It's exactly what he told us. Drew Kayser with the punt. Odell Beckham back will let it bounce, and it goes into the end zone. Touchback. You know, I don't know if Johnny Manziel is going to win the Heisman. I'm not sure. But that guy is a great football player. you gotta got to give it to him. He's carried this team for two years. And let's begin with an LSU touchdown. McGee, after a 65-yard run, set it up. A one-yard rushing touchdown. Then Jarvis Landry from Zach Mettenberger. That made it 14 to nothing. Lambeau for the Aggies. A 41-yard field goal, 14 to 3. But Landry came right back off the arm of Mettenberger. Touchdown. He also went over the 1,000 yards receiving with that one. And then big play for the AM football team at the end of the first half. Darrell Walker after Tredavious White slipped 51 yards. Della Husi for the Tigers. 24-10. They extend the lead. Hilliard with a two-yard rushing touchdown. 31-10. And that's where we are right now. You can see a lot of the empty seats. People showing that there are wise folks who live in Baton Rouge. <laughs> well, as Zach Mettenberger comes on the field, you can't help but think about Manziel. All the pressure on him. I was talking about it during the TV break. You know, not only does he have to do all the throwing, he's the leading rusher in the game. He's got 60 yards. The running backs have 20, basically. Right. I mean, it's that's a lot of pressure to come in and out every game and do it. Here's the toss to McGee. Gets a good block on the edge. Flying down the sidelines, and he is thrown out of bounds by Floyd Raven. But another big run for Terrence McGee. Let me show you a subtle little thing about this offense. It looks like it's no big deal. But this time, the short toss, instead of going inside, is designed to go outside. AM has been seeing that short toss all game 
but this time Connor Neighbors is on the outside blocking the arc that toss. They get used to it. They get used to it. All of a sudden, it's the outside play with the toss. McGee with 11 carries, 131 yards now. And LSU over 250 for the game. There's Neighbors leading the way through again. And the ball down at the 35-yard line. Let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual Insurance update. Vern Derek Carr had an unbelievable day, and he's through seven touchdowns. This is the seventh of the day, 63-21 entering the fourth quarter. Good chance you'll see him in the Mountain West title game on the evening of December 7th, just a few hours after the SEC title game will all be out in Atlanta. Back to you. All right, thank you, Tim. Second down and two. Yeah, another one of those talented quarterbacks. I mean, he's got a load of physical ability. Base. Look forward to having Tim with us in Atlanta. Yep. McGee at the 25. Well, Terrence McGee has been the big star in the running game tonight for LSU. Yeah, he has been able to be the guy that, well, they all have, basically, but McGee has broken the long runs. That one early really popped the court for LSU in the run game. Since then, they have just had the confidence that they could run the ball anytime they want to. Uh, his effort today has put him well over 500 yards for the season and a career high of 149. Yeah, this is the worst nightmare for Texas A&M in this football game. They're young. You know, they haven't had a year. They a lot of uh, true freshmen and sophomores playing on that defensive line, and they're facing a physical football team that they're just kind of running right over them. That was Alfred Blue, and that is what you're hearing from the stands. You know, as we watch Alfred Blue run, we should note that Blue just received a sixth year of eligibility. He and Connor Neighbors both received an extra year. They'll both be back here for LSU. Alfred Blue, Connor Neighbors. Neighbors is a fascinating story. He's from Alabama. His granddad, Billy, was the starting center on a national championship team in 61. His dad, Wes, and his brother, Wes, both played for the Crimson Tide. He chose to walk on at LSU. Copeland is in there now. Alfred Blue. So four follows 44. And a flag is down. Yep. Wouldn't be surprised. Could be on Logan Stokes here on this side. The backside defense, I mean, uh, tight end. I think he grabbed his guy right at the end of the play. Silly play. He was 10 yards away from the, the point of attack. Holding the 94 offense, 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. It was Logan Stokes. The ball's run to the left. You got your right tight end holding. Hmm. Well, the SEC West will come down to Alabama. Auburn, the SEC East, Missouri, and South Carolina. And Missouri has an important game tonight. They must win at Ole Miss. A Missouri loss, and they do have A&M at home next week. But a Missouri loss tonight would give South Carolina the championship based on the tiebreaker. A double overtime victory by the Gamecocks at Missouri earlier. Toss, blue. And of course, uh, been a tough year for the Missouri quarterbacks, but James Franklin healthy again. Matty Mock has played so well he in has. relief. But I like I like what uh, Gary's doing. Gary Finkel coming back with his starter, James Franklin. Now, if it was earlier in the year, you know, and they had eight, nine games, you might over time have a few arguments and a bit of a, you know, the fans taking sides. But I think when you're pointed for a championship, you got two games to go, you can survive it. So I, I, I like going back and Mock did his job as the backup quarterback. Second down, 14. Play action. Mettenberger got him open. Beckham knocked away at the last minute by Devonte Harris. They've had, uh, they've had. Look at <laughs> yeah, Beckham. Now Devonte Harris might have grabbed him 12 times, but he got away with it. They've been playing the slant pass all day, so now they went slant and go to the back of the end zone, and 
Whether he grabbed them or not, they didn't call it. I'd say he grabbed him. Yep, grabbed that right arm again. Yeah. Remember he started out the game doing that? Devontae Harris is good at that. He doesn't get caught. He's he's sneaky. Good corners are sneaky. That's the key to it all. Yep. Hey, they're going to let me play that way? Yep. I'll keep playing that way. Third and 14. Hilliard, the running back. Not much. Well, the penalty again forces a field goal in this situation. Downwind. Della Husse will come on to kick it. Alonzo Williams and Ravens. Fourth down, 13. Put it right in the center with that run, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Field goal unit is in. 35 yards officially. They do have that fake where they lo loop it over their head sometimes. I've seen them do it and practice it many times. And we've seen them do it in the game. But uh, no need here. Field goal attempt. Up and through. And with three seconds shy of eight minutes to go. LSU leads Texas A&M. Johnny Manziel has not been on the field for much of the second half. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Jeep. Red Lobster. USAA. And by K Jewelers. We are back in Baton Rouge, and now Red Lobster presents today's Scholar Athlete. Red Lobster honors James Hairston. He played high school football at Dallas Jesuit, and Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown by donating $1,000 to LSU's General Scholarship Fund. James Hairston's alma mater, Dallas Jesuit, played in the Cotton Bowl today in the state high school playoffs. They played Rockwall. Here's the significance. That's the house that Dope built. Dope Walker's grandson, Zach Walker, one of the stars of Dallas wow. Jesuit right now. There you go. So what a thrill for him to get to play where his grandfather uh, played in 48 and 49. And just one more line about Hairston. Remember? His girlfriend attends Alabama. Here's Hairston's kickoff. Taken at the goal line by Trey Williams. Jalen Collins with the tackle. Largest deficit this season. Previously, they were down, as Gary said a while ago, at home to Alabama, wound up losing by seven. Their last road loss, November 12th, 2011, in Manhattan, Kansas, 53 to 50 in overtime to K-State. Well, what a, what a defensive game so far this LSU defense is having. Two freshmen, true freshman corners played the whole game. Their athleticism has given Manziel problems, and AM has shot themselves in the foot like that play right there with two receivers in the same spot. That's Ricky Jefferson, another of the freshmen. He didn't start, but he's getting extensive playing time. And, of course, one of the defensive stars today has been Rashard Robinson, number 21, who has spent much of the day matched up with Mike Evans. Well, remember, this team's averaging close to 600 yards a game, third in the country. Manziel. That ball tipped. is beautiful. Yeah. He's got great timing. You have to give it to him. You really do. He doesn't throw it like Mettenberger. It's a different style. He sees the spaces, leads the receiver to it. I mean, there, it's different ways to skin a cat. Looked like Daniil Hunter might have gotten a hand on that. And this play whistled. And it'll be first and 15. Yep. All start offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. The five yard penalty, first down. Well, you know, 
guys like playing against the best. And I tell you, when we interviewed the players yesterday, we talked to them. Anthony Johnson said, I'm ready to play against Johnny. Yeah. I mean, they really got fired up to play this game because of Johnny Manziel. Got him from behind. Jermario Rasco. I think Rasco's right there. And interesting, the different styles, because Chavis rushes a slot defensive back, it forces the tackle to take the defensive end, and Rasco goes on the guard. It's a matchup that is working because of the defensive system that Chavis is using. Second down, 21, so a penalty and a sack. Here's Manziel overthrown. Incomplete, Travis Labhart was the intended receiver. Even though they use a three-man line, they always bring an extra guy. I think it's from this side this time. And see the matchup inside? That means the defensive end gets to go on a guard. It happened the opposite way of the play before, and that's how Rasco got the sack. LSU with three down. They drop, but uh, they bring four. And Manziel now looks deep. Heaves it way downfield. He's got a man down there. Evans. And Craig lost him. If he would have just looked for the ball, I think he could have made a play on the ball. He played it so conservatively, he just ran for Evans. Scramble, scramble, scramble. And that was a big mistake by the rookie to leave Evans on the play. And we've got another, take another look at that, uh, at the end of the play, the catch by Evans. See, Lawson never looks up for the ball. He just plays the defender. If he would have turned around, he could have got it. On the defense, the 12th player did not get off the field. Number 94. Five-yard penalty, first down. A lot of penalties for LSU today. First down, five at the 25. Good protection, Manziel. Uh, close. Oh, they're going to call, yeah, they call it. That's Cradavius White, another of those freshmen, true freshmen to whom Gary referred. Darrell Walker, the intended receiver. Yep, got there about a half second too early, didn't he? He needs to talk to Devontae Harris and learn. Well, remember, if, if, if I was LSU, I'd be grabbing my onside kick return team and go, get ready, because if they score here, we're going to get one. Pass interference, number 16, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Just imagine for those defensive backs, the freshmen matching up against these two guys. They were watching these games on TV last year. <laughs> and now they're going up against Manziel, covering some great receivers. See the comparative stats for each. Two of the outstanding quarterbacks in the SEC in a year in which quarterbacks have been dominant in this conference. First and goal. Manziel off his back foot. Oh, that uh, caught, caught it. Caught. <laughs> I was looking for a flag. I didn't think he caught it. And Mike Evans gets it over Richard Robinson. Did the ball bounce or not? It was really close to hitting the turf. Ooh. See how he bobbled it? Did you see? Yeah, he got, I sure did. What did the turf? Did the ball hit the turf? Don't forget, I've got the big screen. Yes. See, he double caught it. I think they might bring this back. They will. Let's take a look. It's going to be on the reviewed. Field was a catch for a touchdown. That play is under further review. Watch Evans just swat Richard Robinson out of the way on this play, though. Robinson tries to hold him. He just swats him away. Now, does the ball bounce off the turf? A little bit farther. Yes, it does. And watch him double catch it now. Yep, they're going to, I believe they're going to bring that one back. I do, too. I'm not sure. I'm over for 2 tonight. I'm going to lay well, back. I'm going to lay back. You've got that small monitor. <laughs> it's really a handicap. I'm trying. I'm working for you. Yep.
Boy, he just swats them away, doesn't he? <laughs> Yeah, you know, the other thing now, just looking at it, I wonder if his left hand had the football in his hand the whole time. And he didn't really bobble it, he just held it with one hand. Now, well, let's see, that was less reaction okay. to the big screen view. He, does it catch, does it hit the ground? Yes, it does. I think so. He has it in his left hand, and then he switches it to his right hand. I think it's gonna come back. Or in we agree? Yes, we do. Quite often we He do. does control yeah. it with his left hand, though. I have to give him that. After further review, the pass is incomplete. In the second down, goal to go at the 10-yard line. The clock will start on the snap. He sure is physical, though. I'll tell you, he is going to be a weapon. At, you know, he's obviously at this level. I think he's going to be able to do the same thing at the next level. Second and goal. Last time they brought seven. Will they do it again? They're going to bring at least five. Yes, they are. Six. 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 Yep. Yeah. Across the middle. Intercepted Lawson. Craig Lawson has it. Out to the 25 and down. Boy, Lawson baited him. Manziel thought he was going to double cover Evans, and he snuck into the throw. See, he believes the double coverage is coming this way, but he sneaks across and makes the interception. Reads his eyes, comes across, and cuts off the throw before it gets to Labhart. What a play. Manziel looked left the whole time for a senior defensive back. He was ready for it. Kevin Sumlin, oh, that might do it. Les Miles, ah, that might do it. Tim Brando in New York with this update. E.J. Levenberry is going to pick off Idaho's Taylor Davis. Return at 78 yards for a touchdown. Seminoles with a school record 80 spot. And the game's not over yet. And with that, we say we hope we see less of it as the BCS era at long last ends. Even Jimbo probably wishes they hadn't scored that many times. Back to you. Hmm. Uh, weekend when Idaho, Chattanooga, others providing the opposition such as it is. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Well, he's got another game to play, does Manziel. He's not going to win tonight, but he's got Missouri on the road. Excuse me. Yes, on the road. And, you know, one of the challenges that Kevin Sumlin put to his team is if they won here, they would have won on every team in the West on the road. Quite an accomplishment. Now first down and 10, and Les Miles preaching to his team. Their goal, since they're not going to get to the SEC championship game, is to win 10 again. Yes. And uh, and I, and I uh, the other part of it is, I think, yeah, of course, the, the object is to win the games. But the other part of it is, I think, to reestablish LSU football. And LSU football is run the ball tough. I mean, we know they're going to throw the ball better because of the addition of Cam Cameron and their ability to create better plays and play sound defense. This has not been a typical LSU defense. And when you lose eight guys, six of them going drafted by the NFL, you got to give them a one-year break. Second down, seven. Whoa. Yeah, he fumbled the snap right up midair and caught it again. I mean, just to let you know what LSU defense as we watch this snap. They're giving up their 10th in the SEC, giving up 153 yards a game. In 2012, they only gave up 101. And in 2011, when they were the team to beat, they only gave up 90 yards a game. It has been a drift in the wrong direction. Well, and uh, they are confronting an Aggie team with those nine straight games of 500 yards plus. That's going to end. And uh, 13 straight games of 40 plus points. That's going to end. Time call.
know you've heard Gary talk about Zach Mettenberger tonight. No doubt you think he'll be a great pro. How about the other quarterbacks in the SEC? All year I've been asked questions about what may be the ceiling. What could be the best you think these guys are? For me, A.J. McCarron, yeah, I could project him being a Phil Simms. Played for a tough coach, understands being able to throw under pressure through a running game. Aaron Murray just grows on you. He's a grinder. He's accurate. A Drew Brees type player is his ceiling in the NFL. Zach Mettenberger, big arm, big stature. Cam Cameron loves him, just like Joe Flacco, the guy he coached for the Ravens. And finally, Johnny Manziel. What would be his style in the NFL if he was a great one? It would be like Fran Tarkington from back in my day, or recently, a little bit like Russell Wilson. So, and with all due an apology to Connor Shaw, who also has a chance to be an NFL quarterback as well. Yeah, Connor Shaw at South Carolina has had quite a senior season. Third down, eight. Kenny Hilliard gets the football and gets out to the 34-yard line. Ivan Robinson makes the tackle. Someone take a timeout. Yep. That was the Aggies. That's their second. It'll be fourth down and two. Thirty-four ten. Tigers. You can stay tuned for the Jeep post-game show on CBS Sports. This one. Gary, I don't know. You and me, I don't think so. <laughs> Jamie Keene with the punt taken with a fair catch at the 10 by Devontae Harris. 56-yard punt by another of the Aussie putters in college football. Well, he had one shank, so his average doesn't yeah. look good, but no. besides that, is that right? Yeah, he's good. not going to talk about that 13-yarder. Here's Manziel. 4.50 to go. Well, his uh, Heisman hopes have taken right. a and, and, little blow to And obviously, you know, with all the news and all the talk that's going on from with Jameis Winston, A.J. McCarron with a big stage, two more games. I've been kind of touting McCarron all year. At the end of the year, he's going to get the stage. He goes undefeated again. He's got a great opportunity, I believe. Manziel. Oh. Nope. Well, A.J. McCarron will be on stage next Saturday when we take our traveling crew to Auburn for one of the most anticipated Iron Bowls ever. Alabama undefeated with McCarron the leader. Auburn, Nick Marshall had the miracle from Marshall last week. Another nice move between Ego Ferguson and Johnny Menzel. We're going to start dating one more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will not be the case for these fellas. Nope. Nor the fans. <laughs> no. There's nothing quite like it, is no. there? Uh, the enmity between the Auburn fans and the Alabama fans is almost indescribable. Got it. No, nope, dropped, dropped it. Did he have possession? I don't think so. Nope, incomplete. Well, you can't throw it any better. This is a drop, but I think, wasn't it Walker early that had the fourth down drop? Of the two, the first drop was the one he'd like to have back. AM scored 10 in the first half. They're still stuck on that number. I mean, it's been one play, basically. I mean, what a defensive effort by this LSU team. Got to give a lot of credit to John Chavis, the type of players he's recruited, the way he's built this defense. They were young. They made mistakes early. I mean, after giving up a lot of points to Georgia and Alabama, they have righted the ship here. And in two games against Johnny Manziel, they've really shined. This season, 
Yep, 16 for 41. Yep. You know, something that Kevin Sumlin said to Tracy really piqued my interest when she asked him about his hand, and Kevin said, oh, that's something we've been dealing with all year. Now, I wonder if that's something from that shoulder that he got hit, and it gives him a little tingling in his hand as the game, as he gets hit through the game. Because if we did not see anything where he hit a helmet or anything, I just wonder if that's, you know, part of that nerve that's running down from that shoulder injury that he, he's come back from and shown that toughness in that game we did against Auburn. That's an interesting supposition. Yeah, it was just strange the way Kevin said that. Mm -hmm. Second down eight. Going to get a heavy dose of uh, keeping it on the ground here. LSU, of course, at home next Friday against Arkansas. Alfred Blue. You know, and this has always been, you know, I mean, sometimes the spread up tempo team carries the day, but just as effective someday is the power run the ball between the tackles. As I've said, both systems can work. There's no magic wand. Like, you have to go up tempo to win. There's still different ways to do it, especially for these elite teams like LSU, Alabama. You know, you can line up and just run over people. Tigers have now gone for 306 yards yep. rushing. Uh, and as you can almost hear two weeks of talking that Miles said to his team, Alabama put it right to us. Nick challenged his players at halftime, and they won the line of scrimmage. That can't happen at LSU. Now these numbers for the running backs for LSU, McGee with 149, Jeremy Hill 76, Alfred Blue 60, Kenny Hilliard 25. They've got a quartet of backs who really excel. Blue is out there right now. Melvin Jones gets a chance at the fullback spot. Left side, blue. Not much. Well, Vern, um, we wanted to go back. Remember how we opened up the game with Zach Mettenberger, the last series of Alabama. Now, I'm not really, you know, saying this is all Zach. There's a lot of tough guys on the field. But I think this example, when you've got a tough quarterback, that just sends reverberations through your whole football team. That's the way you win championships. Yes, you got to throw it. Yes, you got to finesse it. But most of all, you got to have toughness to win a championship. Well, he's been looking for a signature win. Possibly this one. Yeah, he's played well in those big games, yeah. obviously. Mur Murray beats him with a throw against Georgia. He, he couldn't play any better than that game. Thought he had Alabama last year. Th thought he had him beat. Didn't do it. Come back by A.J. McCarron on the screen pass. I mean, he's a couple of throws away from playing for championships. Second down, 9 2 6 to go. And uh, the Aggies are out of timeouts now. This should be Hilliard. And it is. Wow. That's... That play right there tells you the story of the whole game right there. Yep. And they have run the ball for, what, 325, 326 yards. I got to believe almost 300 of them have come right between the tackles. I agree. Right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, imagine that. It's running the ball for 300 yards. I mean, now, I mean, there's, there's a lot of story here. You know, there's a young defense for AM. This is a challenged offense for LSU that was challenged to run the ball between the tackles, but it was a bad matchup. Manziel did not have his best game. And there you go, right there. Look at that. 46 runs up the middle, only seven to either edge. 
And they found the formula. Well, everybody knew Manziel had to win his last two games to repeat as the highest. Agree. Right? Totally agree. So they take a hit today, those chances. I think early in the game, too many mistakes. A couple of decisions not to go to Evans, a couple of drop balls. They never really got back on serve. Forty-five seconds to go. Less miles. Well, he's going to stay on the sidelines for the final 30. Third and 13. Odell Beckham. Just one more story. How about... We talked about the defense, the story of those two true freshman corners matching up in this game against one of the most prolific pass offenses you'll ever see. Richard Robinson, Tredavious White. Robinson, number 21, and then here comes the crowd. Robinson, he had some academic issues, so he didn't qualify until late in the summer. He's not even listed in the LSU media guide. And well, he, today he will he, be next year. Yes, he you know, <laughs> might be on the cover. Right. Boy, he played well. So did Tredavious White. A lot of respect there. Yep. Johnny Manziel, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham, Johnny Manziel. Shouldn't surprise you that we've decided the players in the game are Richard Robinson and Tredavious White. They really defended well. And let's go down to Tracy, who's with a couple of other Tigers. You betcha. Let me start with Zach. And just coming off that Alabama loss, how bad did you want this coming against A&M and Johnny Manziel, you know, the Heisman winner? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's been so long without a win uh, here that uh, it really didn't matter who we played or, or who we played uh, on that team. Uh, you know, Texas A&M is a great squad. Uh, but we came out and played ball today and uh, got a win. What can you say about the offensive line? Because your run game, was the key tonight? Uh, Coach Miles and Coach Cameron, Coach Studd, and myself really all challenged them to, uh, to play their best game. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty obvious they did that. Well, congratulations. Let me turn it over to Les now. And the defense, really the story of the game and the job they did against Johnny Manziel. We talked about it at halftime. What can you say about their performance tonight? Well, first, uh, John Chavis just did a magnificent job in, in orchestrating, you know, defense against a real quality quarterback. That guy's special. And uh, I got to tell you something. The head coach, you know, set, you know, kind of moving at him. He says, hey, coach, I got this one. And he did. And how about Odell Beckham helping you out? How much did that help? Well, Odell, I want you to know something. I would think, and, and John would say this, that, boy, we just got used to the speed of the game right away, and, and that was the difference. Well, enjoy the win. Congratulations. I promise you we will. See ya. Hey. They challenged him. Even the quarterback challenged the offensive line. That was a great interview. And hear that last little challenge from Mettenberger as well. Well, in excess of 300 yards on the ground and the tone of the game set by McGee early in the ball game. Here's the call. The Napa Auto Parts play of the game. Jim Hawthorne with the call. High formation, Mettenberger under center. And he hands the ball away and breaking it across the line of scrimmage and off to the races and there's no money that's going to get him. This is McGee. He's going to take it the distance. Oh, no! They got him at the one-yard line. Well, it set the tone early on. That led to the first touchdown of the ball game. And uh, the LSU Tigers win it going away 34-10 over the Aggies of Texas A&M. This one, all LSU next Friday. They are here against Arkansas. Our crew will move down to Auburn. Boy, we are looking forward to this one. Alabama and Auburn a week from today. For Gary Danielson, Tracy Wilson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Baton Rouge. The Jeep Post Game Show is up next.
after these messages and a word from your local station.